It is a nice sunny day in a place in the middle of the forest. People have gathered and chatted with each other. Someone called for the humans to come for a second. The being has furry ears. The humans are amazed to see a merchant cat who's asking them if they want to check out some good stuff. They find the merchant cat cute and ask what he is selling. The man wonders as the merchant cat shows them a cherry tomato. They are disappointed as they were expecting something like a legendary weapon or mysterious potion. The merchant cat called them foolish humans as he knew they would react that way and explained that it's different from the cherry tomato they know. The merchant cat told them to look at the status window. It is a magical cherry tomato that increases 0.1 MP for 10 minutes and decomposes 10 grams of fats with a shelf life of 30 days. The woman was surprised and wondered if she could lose 10 grams of fat just by eating this, so the merchant cat says that it's 0.5 tower coin each. Each of them wants to buy several of those cherry tomatoes that made the merchant cat startle. The man asks him where he got them and who made those items. The merchant cat just told them that it's a secret. The cherry tomato seems healthy on a farm. Someone picked one. He makes a sigh as he wipes his sweat. He told the rabbit that he thought these tomatoes were enough for today. He also told the other to take some rest. He pinched the tomato to juice it. He asks for the bee for more honey. The bee spits in his cup some honey. The man happily shakes his cup. The tomato juice and honey got mixed well. He gladly drinks it along with the rabbits who are having their carrot. He gulps down his drinks along with the rabbit. The man got delighted as he drank his vitality drink, a honey mix of cherry tomato juice. He received an additional quest to distribute the honey water to the managers of the tower. He seems annoyed as it's a disappointment once he rejects it, so he plans to make some later. Someone called for him as Master Seja. It is the merchant cat, and he seems delighted as he comes back to him. Employee Theo, the merchant cat, hugs Sejin while Sejin praises him for the good work. Theo said he sold out and brought a lot of tower coins, too, so Sejin jokingly said that he thinks he should let him be the CEO for an hour. Sejin says that it's only a matter of time before his name gets known. Theo says that this isn't the time to fool around as he has to leave to earn more money, so he orders Black Rabbit to refill the supplies. Sejin saw that Theo got addicted to earning money. He scratches his head as he almost forgot something. He wrote something on the wall. Sejin wrote the same character on the wall. He is Park Sejin, his class is Tower Farmer, and it's been 150 days since he got here. The Black Rabbit hugs him, so he asks if it's already done. Theo also got on Sejin's shoulder, saying he would also help a little. It's been 150 days since Sejin somehow ended up in the tower and got lost. Sejin gazes throughout the farm and plans to begin along with the animals. This story is about how Park Sejin survived getting lost in the tower. Ten years ago in Seoul, on a bustling day, a 99-floored black tower suddenly appeared in the middle of Gangnam. It wasn't just Gangnam, as a total of 100 towers showed up at the same time. In the cities of different countries, including Korea, each country investigated the tower that showed up on their land. But the only thing they found was that the tower was 990 meters high, and it was made up of an incredibly strong material that couldn't be perforated even using nuclear bombs. One day, people started to come out of the tower through the wall. Several media took photos and videos of them. They were asked how did they get inside the tower. The man said that he suddenly got sucked into a black hole one day, and when he woke up, he was on the tower's first floor. Several news were reported about the tower and the people coming outside, and they found out that all the 100 towers are connected to one. And when you get inside the tower, you will be awakened on the first floor and have to pick one role, either a magician or a warrior. The man explained in a press conference that monsters start to show up on the second floor, and every time they clear a floor, they get different rewards. And with a high chance you get this ticket, someone asked what is that ticket? It is an item people like them, who are awakened can get in and out of the tower freely. However, ordinary people need this ticket to get inside the tower. Still, only the awakened can climb up the tower. Someone asked him if he thought people would go in such a scary tower with a lot of monsters, and if he knew why the towers were generated. The woman showed them a box. She opened it, and lots of gold coins gushed out. The people were startled as they saw a pile of gold coins in front of them. They are petrified to see gold coins along with crystals. The man told them that going up the tower would get them money. The news said that the Awakened Association has announced that the price of Black Tower tickets will be increased from 150 million won to 200 million starting next week. They also announced that there are hundreds of people who are waiting to buy the ticket before the price hike. The woman watched it all. She says that people are risking their lives just to earn money, but they want 200 million for that, so she asks the young man if he thinks that it's too much. Park Sejin, whose age is 26, said that the woman was right. Sejin scrolls on his phone as he computes his tuition fee, interest, rent, and saving. 
He found out that he had saved 12 million won at most, and if the price of the ticket increased again, he wondered when he would be able to buy the ticket. Sejin clenches the bag full of groceries. He wonders if he will be able to buy the ticket as he gazes at the Black Tower. Sejin thought that it was tiring. He was startled and realized something. Sejin told himself not to give up and to keep up the high spirits as there must be some way to save up more money. He seems delighted as he bought these vegetables at a low price, so he wonders if he should try planting these as he heard their price has also increased. Sejin saw his favorite idol member, Sarah, in a commercial for growing vegetables. He thought that he should save up as much as possible to buy the ticket, and he might even get into a good guild when they saw his talent. Sejin imagined that if he cleared the tower, he would propose to the member of Korea's best idol group, Moonlight Fairy, Sarah. Sejin told himself to keep it up when a black thing suddenly appeared behind him. The black thing got bigger behind Sejin. Sejin looked behind him. He saw that this is vanishing, the phenomenon that sucked in the first generation of the Awakened. He blushes as he wonders if it's perhaps going to take him. Sejin shouts his full name, pledges that he is ready to risk his life to climb up the tower, and shouts at the black hole to take him in. Sejin is waiting in front of the black hole. He wonders why it is getting smaller as he tells it to take him in right now. Sejin runs towards the black hole as he won't let this opportunity go away. Sejin runs straight to the black hole to get himself in. He falls on his face to the ground. He felt pain as he landed. Sejin wonders if he can get into the tower. He gets up while expecting to see fancy chandeliers and marbles on the first floor plays full of equipment and potions. But Sejin only saw a rock lighted by a hole above. Sejin gets up and walks towards it. He wonders what this is. He seems panicked as he gazes through the hole above. Sejin shouts where the hell is he, while inside the hole beneath the ground. At a far away land from Sejin's place lies a tower. Sun shines on the tower. The crystal ball seems to be moving. A being saw that the crystal ball detected a change in the tower. They said that they have to find the cause as the manager of the tower. On the other hand, Sejin seems to be confused about what's happening to him. What kind of place is the black tower? The girl answered that it was something like a very spacious and shiny place. There are a lot of different items in the tower you can buy, and most of the time, she buys potions. The man explained that the training ground is the most important thing on the first floor, and if you want to survive in the tower, you should be strong enough to fight the monster. It is all what they said. On the other hand, the morning then came after the night. Sejin still seems down for what happened to him. He found out that there was no exit. He roamed the cave for a whole day, but he didn't see any exit, no training ground, no store, no nothing. So he screamed, asking for help, but still there wasn't anyone around. Sejin wonders if he perhaps gets lost. Sejin laughs while being in a tired state. He was startled when his phone vibrated. He saw his alarm, so he realized that it's been a day since he stayed here. He also found out that there was no network, but he was sure that the alarm was accurate. Sejin's stomach growls as he gets hungry. He places all the groceries he bought. He has one bottle of water, 27 cherry tomatoes, 10 green onions, 7 pumpkin sweet potatoes, and a washed apple. Sejin eats the apple first. He chomps on the apple as eating it in the morning is the best. Sejin gazes at the middle part of the apple, saying it's not enough. Sejin eats the other food he has. He seems delighted as he chomps on the sweet potato. He finds it so tasty with its chewing texture, crunching feeling with a sweet taste. It's more delicious than Sejin expected. Sejin said that they always cook this, but he thinks it's okay to eat it raw sometimes. Sejin suddenly got choked. He immediately gulps down the water. Sejin flops on the ground after he finishes eating. He seems delighted as he has quite a good meal. Sejin wonders how long he is supposed to stay here. He has to find a way out before he runs out of food. Sejin wonders how long he can last with this food in front of him. Sejin thought that if he was not rescued, he might become a mummy. He gets up as he doesn't want to die like this, as this is the tower that he dreamed of getting in, so he can't just die like this. Sejin looked back at the leftover apple. He digs on the soil, and places the leftover apple with the seed intact. Sejin has 10 green onions, so he will use the leaves as food and plant the root part. He also plans to plant about 3 tomatoes and 2 sweet potatoes and leave the rest as his food. Sejin will do anything to survive. He will survive and wait until his fruits grow, as they will be his future. Sejin suddenly heard something and was startled. He glances around and wonders what's going on, so he thinks they might be monsters as that was the sound of a monster, but they said monsters didn't exist on the first floor. Sejin was shocked to see something. He saw the blue moon. Sejin covered his ears as he couldn't stand the sound of growling monsters. Sejin sits while trembling on the ground. He looks up at the sky. He saw something that was flying. Sejin wonders if it is a black dragon. Sejin suddenly got blackout. He falls to the ground in front of his vegetables. The vegetables got sprinkled by the blue moon. 
The day has come, and Sejin's phone alarmed. Sejin took his phone. He wonders how long was he down as he glances at his phone. He suddenly got up as he found out that he had passed out for two whole days. Sejin's waist hurts. He slumps as he feels tired, and his whole body hurts, and he doesn't have any energy. He took a look behind him, and he thought that it was a tree. Sejin was surprised to see his green onions all grown big. Sejin wonders when it grow this big and wonders if green onion something that can grow this big within two days. Sejin wonders if maybe it's because he is in the tower. As he has seen in the documentary, the shape of plants changes depending on where they grow, so he is sure that some power has affected the green onion. Sejin got excited and thought maybe the others were too. He saw that they were here too, and there were 52 of them. Sejin thought that they wouldn't get enough sunlight because of the shadow, so plans to cut them off. Sejin cuts the green onions and finds them thicker and harder than he expected. Sejin was done harvesting, so he wondered what this would taste like. Sejin takes a bite of the green onion. He got fired up after one bite. He washed his mouth with water as he tasted it spicier than the original taste. Sejin thinks that he's going to eat this when he wants to eat something spicy. Sejin took out the cherry tomatoes. He eats one. Sejin eats while sitting on the rock in the middle of the cave. Sejin places the cherry tomato over him. He found out that the sun doesn't set in the tower. But occasionally, there are instances when the sun gets hidden behind the moon on each floor, and they call this phenomenon a blue moon. But the blue moon phenomenon only happens on the 10th floor, so Sejin thought he was somewhere on the first floor. And the dragon wasn't an illusion. Ten years ago, when the tower appeared, one of the major guilds, Phoenix Guild, made an achievement of clearing the 37th floor. The information about the 30th to 37th floor is top secret because of the other guild, but a lot of information about floors below 30 can be found on YouTube. The 2nd to 10th floors have skeleton soldiers. The 11th to 20th floors have goblins. 21st to 30th floor have orcs. And according to some rumors, there are spider monsters on the 31st floor. They never mentioned anything about dragons, as Sejin never heard anything similar to dragons, like some lizard or something else, so he wondered which floor this was. Sejin thought that maybe he got lost on a floor, and that even the top-ranked hunter hadn't made it yet. Sejin's face was sprinkled with water. He wonders if it's raining, but he heard the tower has good weather most of the time. Sejin notices something. He wonders if it's a monster. A rabbit appears over Sejin. The rabbit has its mouth watering. Sejin wonders if that rabbit is also a monster. The rabbit suddenly jumps over to Sejin. Sejin was startled and told it to be careful. The rabbit jumps over his head and falls on the ground. Sejin doesn't think that it's just an ordinary rabbit. The rabbit points at the green onion. Sejin asks if he wants to eat it. He splits the top of the green onion and gave it to the rabbit. The rabbit happily eats it. Sejin asks the rabbit if it likes that green onion. Sejin realizes that they have grown that much already, as it looks like he has to harvest them twice a day. The rabbit seems happy. It seems to be saying something. Sejin saw another one jumping. Another rabbit jumps over the cave. It has a hat, and both a sprinkler. The rabbits seem to be of help to Sejin. Sejin saw another rabbit. He asks if they are perhaps married. The rabbits smile at Sejin. It is the start of Sejin's diary of getting lost in a tower. A couple of rabbits joined him in the cave. Sejin's green onions are getting sunlight inside the cave. The green onions start getting sniped, while the other plants are getting watered. The rabbits seem to be enjoying farming while Sejin is just sitting and watching. They sing while harvesting the green onion. Sejin thought that they were a great couple and wondered how did this happen. Sejin was shocked that they wanted to live in the cave. The rabbits seemed to be begging Sejin. Their eyes sparkled as they pleaded with Sejin. Sejin's heart can't take their cuteness. He said okay to them. Sejin told them that nothing is free as he would think about it if they could help him with the farm, and all they had to do was cut the green onions. The rabbits hugged Sejin in delight. Sejin thinks and feels like he's being controlled. He asks the rabbits if those things they are carrying are items. The spray bottle the husband rabbit is carrying has unlimited water coming out of it. Sejin doesn't know if the wife rabbit has a magic pocket, but she keeps bringing out tools needed for farming. Sejin said he's jealous and wishes he had such equipment. Sejin asks them if they are done, as he will take a look. Sejin told them to dry the green onions they cut, and he didn't see any changes in the sweet potatoes. Sejin saw that the cherry tomatoes had a bigger sprout now, so wondered if it was because of the rabbits, as they were really growing quickly. Sejin glances at them and seems to notice something. The rabbit husband holds the rabbit wife's hand and seems to be concerned about something. Sejin seems to understand what they want to say. Sejin raised his thumb and said that they passed. The couple of rabbits both jumped for joy. They were happy when Sejin approved them. The two of them suddenly rush away from Sejin's direction. Sejin was surprised and wondered what was about. They start digging in the ground. 
They dig a hole very fast. The rabbit wife made a circle flower. She puts it at the door. She seems proud of their door design, while the rabbit husband is tired of the hard work. Sejin was amazed that they made a house that quickly. Sejin told the rabbit husband that he was great. The wife rabbit touches the rabbit husband's shoulder. She blushes at him with cuteness. She pointed to him at their house and seemed to be saying something about love. The rabbit husband seemed to be shocked. The rabbit wife pulls his struggling rabbit husband into their house. The rabbit couple went inside the house they built for love time. Sejin waves at them as he seems to know what they are doing. He is envious of the rabbit husband's love affair. Sejin said that it was so boring to be alone in the cave. But thanks to the rabbits, he got help with farming and saw some cute things. Sejin lies down comfortably on the green onions while smoke starts coming out from them. He immediately got up when he felt something burning behind him. Sejin rolls on the ground as the hotness behind and wonders what it is. Sejin saw that the green onions were burning. The fire was made by the plastic bottle that reflected the sunlight. Sejin suddenly realizes something. He knows that the environment in the Black Tower is tough, but he did not lose any hope. Fortunately, Sejin has green onions and a plastic bottle of water. Sejin had an idea that he could use this transparent bottle as a converging lens to start a fire, just like episode 1 of Surviving in the Wild, a series on YouTube starting a fire. Sejin cries as his attempt doesn't work. It only smokes, but it doesn't catch any fire, so Sejin wonders why isn't this working. Sejin is sure this is how to start a fire but he wonders what's wrong. The green onions are smoking. Sejin notices that it emits smoke. The rabbit couple came out of their house with the rabbit husband, who seemed to be tired. They saw Sejin doing something. Sejin is blowing the smoke from the green onions. The rabbit couple comes close to Sejin. He asks them if they can blow some wind on the leaves. The rabbit starts to blow a small fire at the green onions, while Sejin is hoping for it to work. He hopes for it to start a fire while the rabbits blow on the smoke. The fire on the green onions grows bigger. Sejin seems to be delighted that it worked. He immediately glances at the green onions behind him. He places one onto the fire. Sejin is grilling a green onion. He thinks that this should be enough. He peels the burnt part and plans to eat the other. Sejin chews on the grilled green onion. The rabbit couple watched Sejin as he trembled. Sejin tasted the grilled green onions as sweet as a sugar-like sweetness rushing crazily in his head. Sejin's mouth feels like a wild green horse running in a wide field. Sejin continues to grill the green onions while saying it's really, really delicious. The rabbit couple seem to be talking about it. The rabbit husband also grilled a green onion. They both eat it to have a taste. They also feel what Sejin felt earlier. Sejin's diary of getting lost. He was finally able to fill his stomach with warm food and went to sleep. Chapter 4 Sejin gets up and stretches his arms. He went to a small pond of water. He washes his face. Sejin wipes his face and seems to notice something. He saw that the plants had all sprouted. He completed harvesting the green onions and done watering the cherry tomatoes. Watering the sweet potatoes is also complete. Sejin feels good to do all the farming work. A lot of things happened to him recently. After they learned how to start a fire, they used green onions and installed torches around the cave. It helped Sejin roam around the cave easily, like the dark place around the pond. Sejin notices something in the pond. A large fish suddenly jumps to him. Sejin was surprised and immediately dodged it. He founds that it was a fish. Sejin hadn't seen any fish before, so he wondered if it was attracted to light. That's how Sejin was able to obtain fish in the cave. Sejin wrapped the fish with green onion and grilled it. Sejin's mouth is watering while grilling the fish. He starts eating it. He smiled as he tasted so delicious. The rabbit couple seems to want to have some of the grilled fish, too. Sejin asks them if they also eat meat, so he guesses it doesn't matter because they are also a monster. A couple of days later, the blue moon showed up again. Because of that, Sejin found out that on this floor, the blue moon phenomenon happens every 30 days. Sejin was using the laptop and power bank to charge the phone and keep track of the day. But that, too, reached its limit. Sejin starts writing on the wall. After he couldn't use the phone anymore, this was how he started keeping a record of the day, and it's been 61 days since he has been here. Fortunately, the rabbits go to bed exactly at 7 p.m. and wake up at 5 a.m., so if Sejin just follows their body clock, Making a mistake in counting days because of the never setting sun will never happen. And a few days ago, something great happened while Sejin greets the rabbit husband. Several rabbits have come out of the couple rabbit's house. Sejin greets them and smiles at them. They all come to Sejin. Sejin hugs the baby rabbits that were born between the rabbit couple. Sejin is happy these days being an uncle. Sejin says that they look like they couldn't sleep at all since they must be having a hard time parent so he said that he will take care of the kids so they can take their break while eating breakfast. Sejin takes the babies to look at the flowers on the cherry tomatoes. The cherry tomatoes start flowering. 
Sejun is happy while watching the baby rabbits run around. The flowers have started to bloom, and now it has become a flower garden, and to bear a fruit, pollination is necessary, so Sejun plans to do artificial pollination. Sejun starts scratching the flowers so that the pollen will scatter. Sejun's back is hurting like hell doing this all day, so he thought that it would be great if a bee came over here. But it would be too greedy of him to expect that. Sejin saw that the baby rabbit put his face to the flower. The pollen sticks to the baby rabbit's face. Sejin burst into laughter when he saw him sneeze. Sejin told him that he shouldn't breathe in the pollen. Sejin notices something. He saw that the cherry tomatoes bear fruit. After a long, long work, they finally got some fruit that made Sejin dance in happiness. It was the day before the blue moon. The day outside of the cave is lively. Sejin pours water to put out the fire. He places the fire under the big rocks and placed a small rock to block it. Sejin is delighted to set it all, as he thinks this is enough for camouflage and warmth. Sejin looks over and notices that it's almost time. Sejin bids goodbye to the rabbit husband. He told him that the blue moon is a piece of cake. The blue moon has come. Sejin seems to be tired. He feels it so tiring and wonders when it is going to end. Just in case, Sejin hid all the things that smelled, and he has been waiting in the corner for the blue moon to end, but since he doesn't know how many hours have passed, every minute feels like an hour. He heard cries from afar, but his body still trembled, so Sejin hoped this just ended again without anything bad happening. Sejin suddenly heard a sound. He wondered what it was. A giant foot stomps on the ground. A reed furry monster starts to approach. The bear-like monster is looking at the cave where Sejin resides. The red bear monster stands in front of Sejin's cave in the middle of the blue moon. Sejin saw the giant shadow outside the cave. He gets up and got concerned about what was happening. The red bear monster has a scary look on its face. Sejin trembles while thinking it hasn't noticed him yet, so he plans to hide in a better place. Sejin took his backpack. He moves quite slowly when suddenly the cherry tomatoes and bottle of water fall from the bag. Those made a sound upon falling. Sejin was petrified for a moment. He is sweating profusely while looking down. He immediately looks over and saw that the red bear monster was looking over him. Sejin screams in fear at the red bear. The red bear also roared at him. Chapter 5 Sejin seems to have passed out. The rabbits are waking him up. The rabbit husband slaps him so hard to wake up. Sejin was startled and immediately got up. He wonders what happened and what about the blue moon. Sejin saw that it was over. Sejin passed out and his body hurt. Sejin asks them what happened. Back at the blue moon phenomenon, Sejin was petrified as he faced the monster. The red bear monster looked over him at the cave's entrance. It roars at him loudly. Sejin covered his ear from the loud sound. Sejin got scared as he recalled that moment. He was almost killed by a monster. Sejin trembles as he feels cold. The rabbit wife removes the rock that blocks the fire. They made the fire large again. Sejin covers himself with green onions and comes closer to the fire for warmth. The rabbit wife also got Sejin a grilled fish, so he thanked her. Sejin eats the grilled fish. He seems refreshed as he fills himself with the fish. Sejin knows that the monster noticed this place, and he doesn't know if he felt the presence of another monster or just gave up because this cave's hole was small, but there is no guarantee that the same thing won't happen next time. Sejin thinks that he got lucky this time, but he can really end up dead. Sejin stared at the grilled fish while thinking of what he could do here for now. He feasts on the fish to satisfy his hunger. All he can do here is eat well to survive. The rabbit husband seems to be calling Sejin. Sejin wonders about it. There is a blue cherry tomato in the garden. Sejin was surprised that the cherry tomato was already as big as a golf ball. Sejin sees that it's pretty and wonders why it is color blue. Sejin picked it up and wondered if it is ripe. A tab suddenly appears in front of Sejin. The tab says that Sejin has successfully completed the quest to harvest a fruit containing the energy of the blue moon. Sejin was shocked to see a message window. The message window says that Sejin's amazing achievement has attracted the attention of the tower manager. The tower manager is keeping an eye on Sejin, and the tower manager isn't happy. Sejin wonders why he wouldn't be happy. The tower manager has discovered that Sejin isn't a duly invited guest. The tower manager wants to hide its blunder. Sejin wonders about what it means by blunder, so he wonders if it was a mistake that he just ended up here. Sejin got agitated as he has been living here for 61 days. And now the system is telling him it was a mistake, so he nags to let him go as he wants to go home. The message window tells Sejin that the tower manager is thinking if it should kill him to eradicate the evidence. Sejin gets fired up and tells it that he even unlocked an achievement, and instead of rewarding him, they are planning to eradicate him. The message window didn't say a thing. Sejin wonders if that was too rude. The message window says that the tower manager is awakening Sejin. Sejin got suddenly lit up. He is shocked to know that he is getting awakened. 
so he asks if it means he is officially awakened from the tower. The tab says that the tower manager is assigning Sejun a job, so Sejun wonders if it is swordsman, but he thinks it should be wizard. Sejun is happily waiting for his job. Sejun was assigned a job and became a tower farmer. Sejun got silent for a moment. He seems to be confused. The tab says that due to Sejin's job as a farmer, he won't get sick, he will be closer to nature, and he will gain experience points when harvesting crops. Sejin calls on the status window. Park Sejin is at level 1, with an ordinary talent in level 1 stats, a tower farmer job without a skill. Sejin was shocked and wondered if it was his status window. His talent is ordinary. Sejin was dumbfounded to see it. He imagined his late-night talk at a talk show. A host introduces him as a special guest who cleared the tower despite having an ordinary tower. The host asks for Park Sejin's job. Sejin says that he is a tower farmer. Sejin shouts as he disagrees with being a farmer. He was angry and almost threw the blue cherry tomato. He suddenly stopped as he saw the rabbits in front of him. They seemed to be concerned while watching Sejin get angry. Sejin was startled. The fire inside the cave is crackling. The green onions continue to grow. Sejin looks at the blue cherry tomato. He realizes that they worked really hard to grow this. Sejin made a smile. He thinks that he is going to keep farming. Something is happening at the blue cherry tomato. A status window suddenly appeared. The status windows say that it's a magical cherry tomato imbued with the energy of the blue moon. Sejin was shocked to find out that this tomato was an item. He found out that it increases the stats, so he was delighted to grow something as great as this. The black dragon seems to have known about Sejin's farm. It gritted its teeth and seemed unhappy. Sejin thanked the rabbits for being able to get this far. The status window appeared again in front of Sejin. Another quest has been given to Sejin, and it says to offer the fruit containing the blue moon to the tower manager. And if Sejin refuses, it means death. Sejin gets scared and wonders if it is a joke. He got annoyed as they called it a quest, but it's actually blackmail. So Sejin told them to ask him for one and don't act like they were giving him options. Sejin asks them how worthless his life form to them they give him a death threat. If Sejin refuses the quest, it will cause him death. Sejin is sweating profusely as he waits for their answer. He just bowed and offered them the blue cherry tomato and begged them to spare his life. Sejin lifts up his head. He has completed a quest. He received a quest reward. Sejin was delighted as he was focusing on the death penalty so much that he forgot about the rewards. Sejin clicks on the tab to open the reward. He has obtained level 1 sowing skill, which slightly increases the chance of germination when a seed is planted. Sejin seems undelighted about the reward. He then realizes that his job was as a tower farmer. The green onions continues to grow. Sejin uses the torch in the dark areas of the cave. He lures the fish to catch it. Sejin beats the fish. It falls on the ground. Sejin killed the piranha. The system says that Sejin killed a piranha, so he obtained two experience points by it. After Sejin was awakened, he was able to obtain experience points, and after catching several piranhas for a few days to survive, he somehow reached level 2. Sejin wants to catch more of them, but it's not a good idea to kill a living thing for any reason, as they are a good supply of his protein, so he shouldn't dry out their seed. Sejin grilled several piranhas. He calls the rabbits to eat. The baby rabbits feast on the fish, so Sejin tells them that they should leave some for their mom and dad. Sejin was also able to get information about the rabbits. Farmer White Rabbit is their identity, a type of monster Sejin had never heard about outside the tower. Based on their name, Sejin believes that their species specializes in farming and not fighting. That must be why they aren't known yet. Sejin doesn't know what happened, but he's assuming they must have lost their farm, roamed around, and somehow ended up here. Sejin wonders if they have a hometown they can return to. Sejin told them to head to the farm now, as today is an important day for them. The rabbit husband seems spiritful. The cherry tomatoes grow fruitfully. Sejin and the rabbits were amazed. Sejin got teary-eyed as the time to harvest the fruits they worked so hard to grow finally arrived since the ones they obtained after the blue moon didn't count. Sejin said he's going to harvest it now. His hand trembles as he tries to reach the cherry tomatoes. The rabbits seem nervous. The same goes for Sejin. Sejin is finally able to pick one cherry tomato. Sejin was delighted to pick his first cherry tomato that ripped so well. Sejin obtained 10 experience points upon picking the cherry tomato, so Sejin found out that they were similar to the item he got before. The magical cherry tomatoes, when consumed, decompose 10 grams of fats and increase 0.1 MP for 10 minutes. Sejin holds his very first picked cherry tomato. Sejin saw that its effects only lasted for 10 minutes, but if they ate 10 of these at the same time, they could increase the MP by 1 point so he wondered if it could be the same as the others. Sejin obtained a well-ripe magical cherry tomato when he picked another. He continues to pick another cherry tomato. 
Sejin took an unripe magical cherry tomato so his job points wouldn't increase. He found out that the unripe cherry tomato is not an item but an ordinary cherry potato, so has to harvest a well-ripe cherry tomato to get it as an item. Sejin thinks that it's harder than he thought. Sejin has leveled up and obtained one bonus stat for harvesting several cherry tomatoes. Sejin wants to have a taste of one of the cherry tomatoes. He suddenly notices that the rabbits are coming towards him. They seem to be angry at him. Sejin apologized and handed them the cherry tomato to eat. Sejin begs them not to be furious. He tells them to celebrate the successful harvest of the cherry tomato. The rabbits feast on the cherry tomato. The same with Sejin. He chomps on the well-ripe cherry tomato. When he feels something so suddenly, Sejin is lying on the grass field along with the rabbits. They are gazing at the sky and see a shooting star. The shooting star exploded into fireworks. They all were amazed by it. The fresh scent of grass and the sweet and sour taste that's melting with that scent. It's like fireworks in the middle of summer. Sejin shed a tear while imagining it. The rabbits saw him cry. They shrug as they don't know what's happening. The rabbits start storing the cherry tomatoes. They place them around the rocks they created. They covered them with green onions. Sejin watches them do their work. He saw that the baby rabbits were big enough to help their mom and dad, and they were indeed the children of the farmer white rabbit. Sejin felt sleepy, so he plans to sleep now. He fell into deep sleep right away. He has another quest that orders him to offer 100 magical cherry tomatoes to the tower manager while sleeping. Sejin tosses by his side as he sleeps. He got up immediately as he was startled by the system. Sejin got annoyed and immediately offered the 100 cherry tomatoes. Sejin hopes for a useful reward this time. He obtained level 1 harvest skill, which made the harvested fruits obtain an optimum condition, even if they were slightly overripe or underripe. Sejin clenches his lips in disappointment at the reward. Sejin wonders why he needs a harvesting skill, is what he thought, but it's more useful than he thought. An effect activates when Sejin harvests a slightly unripe or overripe fruit. Thanks to that, he was able to get the job experience point even when he harvested unripe magical cherry tomatoes. Sejin didn't have to wait for the cherry tomatoes to ripen, so it was easier and faster for him to work. He saw the tab again. Sejin curses for having no reward. He offers another cherry tomato for his quest. It was just the beginning for Sejin. The tower manager is getting greedier without an end in sight. Several quests have been ordered for Sejin. This time, he was asked to offer 500 cherries. Sejin gets annoyed and refuses the quest. The manager of the tower is surprised. Sejin's diary of getting lost in a tower. He rebelled against the tower manager for the first time. Sejin got agitated and nagged that they'd already taken hundreds of them earlier, as they also needed to eat some of them to stay alive. The tower manager said that it was the tower farmer's problem not theirs, and told Sejin to stop protesting and bring the magical cherry tomatoes. Sejin smirks at what he read. He told them that he worked hard and suffered for days to harvest it. The tower manager says that Sejin has only sown the seeds, and it asks him not to overreact over something that's not a big deal. Sejin snaps when he gets told that it's not a big deal. He annoyingly refuses that he's not giving it to them. The tower manager is flustered. Sejin just turned his back to the window tab. The tower manager still asks him if he is really refusing the quest. The tower manager says to Sejin that he could die if he refuses the quest. Sejin said that he doesn't want to give the crops he grew to someone who says, all he did was sow the seeds. The tower manager tells Sejin that he must listen to its orders as it was made by the manager, but that's the reason why Sejin is not giving it to them. Sejin was annoyed that they forcefully made him do this and didn't even appreciate all the efforts he made. Sejin shed a tear as he said that the tower manager was a bad employee. The black dragon got wonderstruck as he watched Sejin's nagging. He seems annoyed. He was on the verge of saying sorry, but he didn't continue it. Sejin teases him while eating the cherry tomato. Sejin was told that the tower manager was angry because he ate the magical cherry tomatoes and would kill him right now if he didn't do the quest. Sejin told them to just take five, and he'll give the rest later. He said that he needed to feed the other kids, too. Sejin offered the five cherry tomatoes. The tower manager says that they'll compromise for this one time. The window tab finally disappeared. Sejin smiled as he thought that the tower manager was definitely trying to say sorry. Sejin said that the tower manager is simpler than he thought. Day 91. After Sejin got lost, it was the fourth blue moon. Sejin sits under the blue moon. He sits while eating a cherry tomato. Sejin heard that people with high MP can withstand the roar of a monster to a certain level. That's why he's eating this, but he hopes what happened that time doesn't happen again. Sejin hopes that the time goes quickly. The blue moon glittered Sejin's plants. Sejin saw it. He was startled as he found out what was behind his plant's growth. The cherry tomato envelopes with the blue moon's light. It suddenly turned into a blue cherry tomato. 
The blue moon shimmers Sejin's plants. Sejin can't wait to harvest it. The leaves on the ground were also shimmered by the blue moon. Sejin saw that even the sweet potato leaves were illuminated by the blue light. Sejin wants to check it. He stands and walks towards the plants. Then he runs in haste. Sejin starts digging into the sweet potato. He dug a quite large area. Sejin was amazed. The sweet potato is imbued with the energy of the blue moon, and when consumed, it'll increase your strength. Sejin happily harvested it. Sejin's job experience points have increased a great deal, and his harvest level 1 proficiency has greatly increased and finally obtained 50 experience points. Sejin glances at the blue cherry tomato. He picked it. Sejin seems delighted, as if he has the world in both of his arms. Sejin got annoyed as he knew that an additional quest had been triggered. Sejin wonders why there are two quests at the same time, and it might really kill him if he refuses these quests. Sejin offered the remaining magic cherry tomatoes and plans to finish the last quest. The tower manager is happy with the magical cherry tomatoes in the basket. The tower manager mutters and asks what Sejin is doing, so Sejin says that he will give this later and let it slide for today. The tower manager bluffs that Sejin must give them the sweet potatoes later. Sejin wonders what he should do with these. Sejin immediately throws the blue cherry tomato into his mouth. Sejin chomps on it. His body began trembling. Sejin sparks in happiness as he can feel a festival of freshness and sweetness in his mouth. Sejin wraps the sweet potato with green onion and throws it to the grill. Sejin is happily waiting for this delicious food while grilling. The sun lights up the cave. The rabbit's door opens, and the rabbit family comes out. Sejin told them that they had great timing. Sejin presents to them the sweet potato with the energy of the blue moon. The rabbits got watery mouths as they saw the sweet potato. The rabbit husband suddenly blocks his family from the sweet potato. Sejin asks what's wrong. Sejin asks if he wants him to eat it himself because there's only one. Sejin shed a tear as he was touched by the rabbit husband's kindness. He praises the rabbit husband, saying that he's the only one that's thinking about him. Sejin thought that he'd never tell him he had eaten it secretly alone earlier. Sejin peels the sweet potato to eat. Sejin took a bite. His mouth got burnt from its hotness. The sweet potato fell on the ground in front of the rabbits. The rabbit husband got wonderstruck. He was about to get the sweet potato but was outrun by his children. The baby rabbits eat the sweet potato. Their mouths also got burnt, so they immediately spit the sweet potato. The baby rabbits cry while Sejin worries about his sweet potato. Sejin's diary of getting lost in the tower was he ate a fiery hot meal that day. Sejin told the rabbits that from now on, they will be planting the sweet potato sprouts. He told them that it was the thing that they had eaten. He prohibited them from eating the sweet potato sprouts for the time being. The baby rabbits got wonderstruck. The sweet potato sprouts have been the favorite snack of the baby rabbits late, so Sejin doesn't think that there will be any leftovers since they've been eating it all day. Sejin told them that if they helped him plant the sweet potato sprouts before that, he'd give them some special snacks. Sejin decided to expand more areas so he could plant more sweet potato sprouts, so he lures the baby rabbits with a special snack. The baby rabbits got lured in by Sejin. The baby rabbits started doing as Sejin told them. Sejin told the rabbit wife to leave one green onion so he could get the seeds by blooming the green onion flower. Sejin thinks that he needs to plant seeds first so it can become an item. The baby rabbit starts digging. The other baby rabbit gets the plant. He placed it in the hole and planted it. The baby rabbits do all the planting while the rabbit wife does the watering. The baby rabbit's mouth is watering while holding the sprout leaves. While the other chews on them, Sejin picks the cherry tomato. His harvest level 2 proficiency has increased very slightly, and he has obtained 10 experience points and obtained 1 bonus stat after leveling up. Sejin is at level 8 and saw his job level has increased. He sits beside the fire to make some snacks. The window tab suddenly appears as the tower manager is interestingly keeping an eye on what Sejin's going to cook today. Sejin looked behind him, but the window tab immediately disappeared. Sejin seems unhappy with the tower manager for keeping an eye on him. Sejin called the baby rabbits to eat. The baby rabbits come running to him. Sejin made a special roasted cherry tomato bone skewers. The rabbit family has each of the cherry tomato skewers. Sejin told them to make sure to blow it first before taking a bite because it's hot. The sweet potato sprouts are already planted enough, so Sejin wonders if he shall dig some sweet potatoes for dinner. Sejin starts to dig a little bit. Sejin seems delighted with his harvest. It's a strength sweet potato that can break down 10 grams of fat in your body and increase strength by 0.1 for 10 minutes. Sejin harvested about 5 sweet potatoes from each tree, and it's pretty good his first harvest. Sejin saw some sweet potato sprouts. He immediately planted them on the ground. He said that it'd be such a waste if he left even a single potato. 
Sejin's sowing level 1 effect increases the possibility of growth of the sweet potato sprouts, and his proficiency has slightly increased, so Sejin wonders if does it counts as sowing. Sejin got petrified when he realized that he needed to plant all of it to increase his skill level. He told the baby rabbits to stop because he'd do it. Meanwhile, the black dragon seems to be doing something. He copied Sejin's snack earlier. He grilled the cherry tomatoes and have a taste of them. The black dragon spits them as he tastes it bitter. He wonders what's wrong as the humans eat it very deliciously. So he takes another bite and finds out that the inside is sweet and delicious. He gets the crystal ball to see what Sejin doing right now. He saw that Sejin was eating along with the baby rabbits. He can't believe what he saw. He got agitated as they roasted the sweet potatoes without him. The great black dragon, Aileen Fratani. Sejin is happily eating with the rabbits. He saw that another additional quest had been triggered. He was ordered to give roasted strength sweet potato to the tower manager. Sejin seems to not care about it. He postponed the quest. The tower manager urges Sejin to give it the roasted sweet potato, and it says it won't let him off if he doesn't give the roasted sweet potato. So Sejin says there's only one left and asks if there's anything they can give for his reward. The tower manager just revised the quest. Sejin was ordered to offer one roasted strength sweet potato to the tower manager with a job-related skill reward. Sejin offered the sweet potato. Sejin opens the reward. He acquired level 1 seed store, and when the skill is activated, a product can be purchased at the speed shop once every 30 day. Sejin was happy that he could now purchase something inside the tower. Sejin activated the seed store skill. Level 1 seed store has been activated. Sejin doesn't have any transaction history at the moment. Sejin wonders how he makes the purchase as he doesn't have any money. The system offers entry-level services to Sejin. Sejin is the first rookie tier customer at the seed store, so they provide him with one tower coin. One tower coin will be deposited into Park Sejin's account at the seed bank. Sejin was shocked. He praises the seed store for being kind and the best. Sejin learned that the tower coin is a currency that is used inside the tower, and the market price of the tower coin is about 1 million won. For the rookie tier, three types of seeds will be shown randomly. The system wants to show three random seeds being sold today to Sejin. Sejin can only purchase one at the current level. 1,000 cabbage seeds, 1,000 red pepper seeds, and 1,000 carrot seeds are shown to Sejin with the price of 0.1 tower coin. Sejin thought that if it was a 0.1 tower coin, then it was about 100,000 won per 1,000 seeds, and it was so expensive. Sejin thought that red pepper and cabbage were too iffy to pick since he couldn't even make kimchi here. Then Sejin was only left with one option. He said he had only left the carrot, that was heard by the rabbits. Sejin asks them what's wrong. He asks if they want to eat carrots. The rabbit shines in craving for carrots. Sejin taunted them again as he said carrot again. Sejin continued to shout carrots, making the rabbits all excited. The rabbit husband suddenly kicks Sejin in the face. Sejin has purchased 1,000 carrot seeds. 0.1 tower coins are withdrawn from Park Sejin's seed bank account. He earned one seed shop mileage. Seed store mileage can be used to raise Park Sejin's level. The mileage he needs for leveling up is 100 points. Sejin received a pouch. Sejin thought that it seemed the pocket was more expensive than the seeds themselves. The tower manager is satisfied with Sejin's purchase, so Sejin asks why they are the only one who feels satisfied. Sejin's diary of getting lost in the tower was he got new carrot seeds from his first trade at a seed shop. A bee suddenly appears and sees Sejin along with the rabbits. The rabbits seem to be busy with something. Sejin is just watching them from afar. The rabbit husband and wife are all over each other. It's been a few days since Sejin planted the carrots, and although the seeds are yet to sprout, the rabbits have been acting like that all day in front of the place he planted, so he wonders if they like carrots that much. Sejin wants to take a nap first as he will pollinate the flowers and cut onions in the afternoon. Something flew beside Sejin. Sejin is swinging his hand to drive it away. Sejin got annoyed as he wondered why the bug suddenly showed up. The bug appears in front of Sejin. It seems to be curious on something. Sejin was surprised. He finds the bug cute and wonders if this is a monster in the form of a bug. Sejin saw that the bug's name was Poison Honeybee. Sejin was shocked when he found out its name. He told the rabbits that the bee must be dangerous. But the rabbits run away on their own. Sejin bursts into tears as he can't believe they just left him here alone. The tower manager says poison honeybees are carnivorous bees that hunt monsters with poisonous stings and eat their flesh. Their stings are very dangerous, so avoiding them is the best course of action. Sejin drives away the poison honeybee. Sejin pleaded that he is not tasty so that the honeybee would spare him. Sejin got a plant in his hand. He immediately gives it to the poison honeybee to eat instead. Sejin offers the flowers to the poison honeybee while defending himself. 
It comes closer to the flowers. Sejun, take a look at it. The bee seems to be feeling the flower. It seems delighted and likes the flower. Sejun asks the tower manager, as it said earlier that the bee was carnivorous. Sejun suddenly remembers the moisture. He calls the poison honeybee. Sejun told it that if it's hungry, it can eat the other flowers as well. The bee immediately flies to the flowers. Sejun thought that at this rate, he didn't need to pollinate cherry tomatoes anymore. Sejun nags at the rabbits for running away earlier, and still has the nerve to come back. The rabbits hug Sejun and coax him not to be angry. Sejun is surprised and asks the poison honeybee if it is done. Sejun is nervous as it gets closer to him. The bee landed on Sejun's clothes. It stretches its legs and took a nap on Sejun's stomach. Sejun's diary of getting lost in the tower. It looks like their family has one more member now. The cherry tomatoes have bare fruits. Sejun wrote on the wall to keep track of his days in the cave. It's the 120th day after getting lost. Sejun and the rabbits work on the farm. Sejin told the baby rabbits to play somewhere because he was working there. Sejin saw that they were having a great time. Sejin asks the bee if it sucked all the nectars already. It's been several weeks have passed since the poison honeybee came here. She goes to work in the morning, sucks nectars, and returns to the forest outside in the cave in the evening. Sejin thought that maybe she's not going back to her own group. A few days ago, she started spitting out honey like this. Sejin made a honey onion. The sweet flavor of the freshly grilled green onion is enhanced by the sticky honey of the poison bee. Sejin and the rabbits find it so delicious. Sejin was freaked out at first because he thought the bee was dangerous, but thanks to her, Sejin was able to quickly expand the field to get honey. The window tab says that the tower's manager is happy for Sejin. Sejin glances at it, but it immediately disappears. Sejin remembers that the blue moon is coming soon. He finds it so worrisome. He hopes that it goes by safely this time as well. It's the 121st day after Sejin's getting lost, and he is collecting cherry tomatoes. The poison honeybee doesn't come anymore, so Sejin thought that she must be preparing for the blue moon as well. He saw that the rabbits were especially anxious today. Sejin was about to tell the rabbits to go home, but they saw them hugging each other. The rabbit parents hugged their children tight. Sejin seems confused. The rabbit parents suddenly run away. They go to their home. The rabbit husband waves at them and closed the door. Sejin was concerned about the rabbit babies as the parent rabbits left them behind when the blue moon was coming soon. The blue moon finally came. Sejin got nervous. The baby rabbits suddenly transform into a monstrous form. Sejin sweats in nervousness as he wonders what's going on. Sejin is wondering what in the world is going on here. The baby rabbits got buffed and seemed monstrous. They roared like monsters. Sejin watches them from afar as they transform into monster rabbits in the middle of a blue moon. Sejin was dazzled when the rabbits suddenly shone brightly. Their body glows from their ears and down to their feet. The rabbits transform into cute ones and big rabbits. Sejin was shocked. He wonders if they have become adult rabbits and even if their color has changed. Sejin thinks that it's the first blue moon since they were born. Then, it's like their coming of age ceremony. Sejin cries as he thinks something wrong happened to them. The black rabbit got concerned when Sejin cried. Sejin gives them kisses for being cute. The blue moon finally goes away. The parent rabbits come out of their home. The rabbit husband saw his children. The rabbit family hugs each other. One of the rabbits raises its hand. A farming tool suddenly appeared. Sejin was surprised and wondered what are those. The white rabbit farmers have their own tools, such as a sickle, cart, water can, and shovel. Sejin found out that when a rabbit becomes an adult farmer rabbit, they can have their own item, but he can't borrow it. Sejin wonders what about the black rabbit. The black rabbit summons his item. He has a hammer. Sejin wonders about it since it's not a farmer's tool. Sejin takes a look at his name. He is a black rabbit warrior. The sun lights up the cave. The rabbit farmers continue to work on the farm. The rabbit uses his sickle to chop the green onions, while the others use their cart and shovels. They collected a lot of cherry tomatoes. Sejin was touched as the cute babies that used to run around have grown up so well. He glances at the black rabbit. Sejin thought that he was just unemployed. Sejin asks the black rabbit if he's a warrior, then his job is to fight. But since they're in the cave, there won't be any monster that'll endanger the farm, so there is nothing to fight with, and the hammer can't be used to help farming. The black rabbit suddenly got up. Sejin learned that the black rabbit could just hunt in the pond as hunting is also a kind of fighting. Sejin told the black rabbit that he'd lure the fish with the torch, and he would catch the fish. Sejin starts luring the fish with the torch. The fish jumps. The black rabbit jumps with his hammer. He strikes the fish strongly. The fish flies in the wall. Sejin saw that the flesh of the fish had been smashed. The fish's flesh got smashed and separated from its bone. Sejin got wonderstruck. He placed the fish's bone on top of its smashed flesh. Sejin seems gloomy about it. 
He told the black rabbit not to be sad and he'd get better if he kept on practicing. Just like that, the rabbit started getting used to their roles. After the 125th day, the seed store was reopened. Sejin wants to purchase an item. There are 50 sweet pumpkin seeds that cost 1 tower coin, 10 watermelon seeds that cost 5 tower coin, and 200 waxy corn seeds that cost 0.5 tower coin. Sejin was shocked as the prices of the currently listed seeds were so different from the previous one. Sejin has only 0.9 tower coins. With this, he can only buy waxy corn seeds, and he doesn't even have any way to increase his money in this place. First, getting the rewards after clearing a floor. And even though its amount is high, the prize is rewarded only once on each floor, so the percentage of the actual profits earned by hunters is not that big. The second method is hunting the monsters and selling the monster body to the wandering merchant or to the store on the first floor, and it's the best source of income for the hunters because it can make continuous profits. The third method is completing the quest and getting rewarded, but the quest reward varies widely, so it's hard to tell, and among these three, clearing the first floor is impossible for Sejun as he can't even escape from this cave. Sejin thinks about the heist-level quest that was given by the tower manager. He calls the tower manager and asks if they can reward him with the tower coins for completing their quest right now. The tower manager said that it didn't know what Sejin meant, but it would tell him later when he's already grown up, so Sejin asked how old the tower manager was. The tower manager said that it was a secret, so Sejin asked how many more years he needed to finally grow up. The tower manager said that Sejin needs to be at least 300 years old. Sejin got angry at what the tower manager said. The window tab disappeared as Sejin got angry. Sejin plans to prioritize what he can do for his survival for now, and the item he can only purchase is corn seeds. Sejin chooses the waxy corn. He purchased 200 waxy corn seeds. 0.5 tower coin is withdrawn from Park Sejin's seed bank account. He earned 5 seed shop mileage. He can use the seed store again in 30 days. Sejin got the seed pouch. He takes the corn seeds. He showed it to the rabbits. They told them to start working. But before that, Sejin wanted to eat something first as he got hungry. Sejin grilled fish. He and the rabbits seem full after eating. Sejin asks the honeybee that she spent a lot of time in this cave lately, so he wonders if it will be okay if she doesn't return home. The honeybee seems happy to be with Sejin again. The honeybee seems to have heard something. Sejin wonders about it. He thinks that it's a monster. Someone told them not to get the wrong idea as he is not a shameless cat who is here to steal their food. Sejin wonders about this cat and asks why he has come here. The cat jumps into the cave. The cat landed in front of Sejin. The cat said hello to them. The cat asks if he perhaps customer parked Sejin. The cat introduces himself as Theo, the wandering merchant. Sejin's diary of getting lost in the tower. He met a wandering merchant cat. Sejin was asked if he perhaps customer parked Sejin, and the cat introduced himself as Theo, the wandering cat. Sejin heard that sometimes, when people go up the tower, they'd meet one wandering merchant, but he didn't expect the wandering merchant to be a cat. He saw the cat's shiny eyes and those chubby and soft cheeks. Sejin wants those jelly paws to knead on him. Sejin blushes as he really likes cats. Sejin asks what Theo wants. Theo said that he heard a new rookie made transactions in the seed store, so he came here to greet Sejin and make some deals. Sejin wonders about the deals, and Theo says that he has pretty good items. Theo's stomach suddenly growls. Theo apologizes as he hasn't eaten anything today, and he ends up showing an embarrassing image in front of a customer. Sejin stared at him, and grins deviously. Sejin calls Theo. He asks if he wants to eat a roasted fish. Theo's eyes shine as he sees the grilled fish. Sejin said it was fine as he couldn't touch the customer's food. Sejin teases Theo with the smell of the sweet and tender grilled fish. Theo's mouth is watering. Theo ate that fish in the cave. Theo got a full belly after eating. Sejin saw that Theo had eaten five fish, so he must have been really hungry. Theo thanked Sejin. Sejin suddenly charged Theo with 0.5 tower coins. He told Theo that he had to pay for the roasted fish that he had just eaten. Theo thought it was for free, so Sejin said that there are no such things as freebies in this world, as Theo also came here to make a deal. Theo is surrounded by the rabbits while Sejin asks if he's not going to just eat his customer's fish and run away. Theo handed the 0.5 tower coins to Sejin with teary eyes. Sejin was happy when he got a tower coin. Theo cries as he comes here to take the customer's money, but instead, he's the one who is giving away money. 
Theo is desperate to sell all his things and begs Sejin to take a look at his items. Theo takes the items. He showed Sejin a tumbler, mini fan, and portable hand warmer that cost 5 tower coins each. Sejin asks if these items are from outside the tower. Theo explains that this tumbler has preservation magic. If you put hot or cold stuff here, it'll maintain the temperature. And the mini fan has a wind magic enchantment that you can just press the switch if you need it. Sejin apologizes to Theo and cuts him off. Sejin said that all the items that he brought were trash. Theo got agitated and told Sejin that there were items from outside the tower. So how could he not recognize their value? Sejin said that he was also someone from outside the tower. Theo got gloomy when he heard Sejin. Sejin explains that there's no such magic inside this thing, and the tumbler prevents heat transfer by blocking contact from the outside. He also explained to Theo that if you turn on the mini fan and the portable hand warmer in a few hours, it'll stop working because the batteries run out. Theo said that it's not true, as Scarum definitely said that there's magic there. Sejin told Theo that he thinks he got scammed by that Scarum punk who sold him these things. Theo said that it was impossible as he was so kind to him. Theo cries as he finds out that Scarum is a bad goblin and wonders why he always gets scammed. Sejin asks Theo if he doesn't mind telling him what happened. Theo said that he is from the 75th floor, and it's one of the tower's neutral zones. For a long time, Theo admired Meryl, the most beautiful girl in the Graner village. Theo tells Meryl that he likes her and begs her to date him. But Meryl got disgusted at the fish that Theo gave. Meryl throws Theo's fish and says that it has the smell of a cheap rice fish. Theo told her that he had worked hard to get those roasted rice fish. Someone laughs at Theo and tells him that he should know his place as he dares to seduce Meryl. He is Orin, the son of the richest cat in the village. Orin told Theo that he should at least bring a high-quality salmon as a gift, but Theo said that Meryl doesn't like greasy food because she's afraid she'll gain weight. Meryl said that the salmon is so beautiful. Theo cries about what he is seeing. Orin takes Meryl away to go to his house and slice some salmon steak. Theo pulls Meryl's hand. Theo told Meryl that all the things that they shared together, and their memories, and he didn't mean any of it. Theo said that it was all just a lie. Theo looked at Meryl seriously. He recalls those unforgettable days. Meryl pulls away her hand. She gets annoyed and asks what Theo is talking about and doesn't get ahead of himself. Meryl said that she just smiled at Theo a few times, and he got all delusional and he kept following her even though she said she didn't like him. Meryl told Theo that she hates poor cats that smell like cheap rice fish like him the most. Theo cries a river and after, Meryl is taken away by Orin, the son of the richest cats in the town. Theo runs while crying. He decided to run away to become a wandering merchant with the determination to become rich and to get his revenge. Theo said he even brought the necessary license and equipment to become a wandering merchant using his lifelong savings worth 50 tower coins as he was going to buy something from the peddler with the remaining 5 tower coins to resell them. Someone asks Theo if he is the new wandering merchant. He introduces himself as Scaram. They talk about the items from outside the tower. Scaram told Theo that if he takes these items to the upper floors, he can make quite a profit. Theo asks Scaram why he is selling him such great items at dirt cheap prices. So Scaram says he came to like Theo, and it's like the goodwill of a senior who wants to train their junior merchant. Scaram said that if he's not going to buy it, he can just give it to another merchant, but Theo insisted that he'll buy it. Scaram gave Theo a map with the location of the new user of the seed store, and since it's a new member, he said that Theo can make a great profit if he's lucky. Scaram made Theo pay for the beer since he had given him some useful information. Theo got teary-eyed as he explained that it was the reason he gave all his money to Scaram to pay for the items, and with the expectation that he might be able to sell these things. He starved himself and barely ended up here. Theo cries as all of these things are trash. Furthermore, the customer took away all his remaining money. Sejin thought that this cat was really a pushover. Sejin told Theo to calm down and cheer up while eating some roasted fish, but Theo said Sejin would just ask him to pay later. Sejin said he'd just give it to him and would even consider everything he ate as a treat. In exchange, Sejin asks if Theo thinks he can work with them. Sejin's diary of getting lost in the tower, he found a pushover partner. Theo asks if Sejin wants to work together. Sejin said yes, as he happens to need a good merchant to sell his items. Theo asks if Sejin heard his story earlier and said that he's just a noob and a useless wandering merchant. Sejin told him that he definitely has a good ability, and even though Theo makes little mistakes, he just got a business partner with the stories he told him earlier. Sejin said that Theo was right about them being business partners. The rabbits made them a chair to relax on. Sejin relaxes while sipping on a drink. The rabbits serve Sejin and Theo while relaxing. Sejin told Theo that he couldn't sell the items he bought because he was deceived, and now he doesn't even have money to open a deal. 
Sejin said that Theo would just take his items and sell them to other people, and Sejin would give him an incentive from some of the sales revenue. Theo wonders about the incentive. So Sejin says that he has to sell the items above the prices he set. Sejin said Theo can sell it at a much higher price because he has the ability for it, and Theo will get 2-5% to of the price of items that he sells. Theo thought that if it's 3-5%, to the condition is too unfavorable for him. Theo got annoyed as he thought that Sejin thought he was so stupid to be deceived like this. Sejin calls the rabbits. Sejin told Theo that their deal isn't limited to just that, as he will pay him with 10 grilled fish or equivalent coins per week. Sejin asks Theo if he wants to sign a contract with him. Theo reminds himself of what happened before and tells himself to be a smart cat as he can't be deceived like that time again. Theo's mouth is watering. He told Sejin that if he gave him 20 grilled fish, he'd consider it. Sejin smiles devilly. He agreed and said he'll give him not just 20, but 5 more fish. Theo's mouth overflows with water, as he knows it's a total of 25 grilled fish. Sejin said that besides the weekly pay, Theo can eat as much as he wants when he's here. Sejin said word by word that Theo could eat as much as he wanted. Theo was delighted when he heard that he could eat as much as he wanted. Sejin asks if Theo has a paper. Theo brings out the paper. Sejin wrote on it. They both signed on their name. The contract between them is complete. Theo got wonderstruck as he didn't realize he signed the contract because he was so excited. The paper floated in the air. The paper transformed. The system showed the contract between them. Sejin heard that inside the tower, a contract is one of the most important documents that can't be destroyed. Theo asks if Sejin wants him to use his dialect from Granner based on the fourth clause of the special condition. Sejin told him that he would understand it when the time came. Theo said that they don't know whether he'll do well or not, as the first clause of the special condition says that if Theo can't sell well, he can terminate the contract. Sejin told him not to worry and it'll sell well because he believes in him. Theo loves it when Sejin calls him sales cat Theo, the resourceful. Theo asks what kind of things Sejin will sell. Sejin said that it's just cherry tomatoes. Theo wonders about it. Sejin picks one. He showed it to Theo. Theo thinks that if he's lucky, he will get at least 0.01 tower coin from the Awakens who recently came to the tower, so he asks Sejin how much he is selling this. Sejin said that it's 0.05 tower coin per piece. Theo thought that it might be a good thing as the contract would be terminated if this month's total sales revenue fell short of 5 tower coins. Moreover, he would also get to eat grilled fish in the meantime. Theo asks, since it's the first sale of the contract, how many should he bring? Sejin told him that it was 1,000. He told Theo that he had already prepared 25 grilled fish as his weekly payment and asked how Theo carried this. Theo explains that he will put it in his item. The bundle. This bundle has preservation magic, space expansion magic, and magic that'll make it lightweight so that he can keep a lot of things in it, and it'll still be in its original state for a long period. Theo throws his bundle to the items. The bundle sucked all the items. The items get into the bundle. Sejin saw how convenient it was. Theo said he would be back. They wave at Theo. A few days later, on the 38th floor of the tower, people are battling a monster. The man shielded himself from the monster. The others shoot fireballs into the monster. The man beheaded the monster. Someone praises the leader of the Phoenix Guild, Kim Dongshik. Dongshik told them to stop the praises and told Jessica that he wouldn't let her off if she cheated like last time. He smirks at Jessica's cheekiness. Dongshik notices something. He asks who's there. A cat comes out from the bushes and calls the humans. Theo asks them if they would like to see some good stuff. They saw a cat wandering merchant. They find him cute. Theo reminded of what Sejin said to make sure to use Granax dialect when talking to the humans. Theo told them to look at what he brought, using the Granax dialect. They saw cherry tomatoes. Dongshik told him that if he was going to sell, he must sell something like bread or meat. Theo told them that this is different from the cherry tomatoes they know of. He told them to check its stats. The man saw that the magic cherry tomato increased by 0.01 MP for 10 minutes, and he thought that was too low. Theo said that it's 0.05 tower coin per piece. The man told the others that they were just waiting for their time, but the girl said to wait. She saw that you'll lose 10 grams of fat when you eat it. The others heard what she said. They looked back and asked what did she say. They saw that they could eat up to 10 pieces per hour. They immediately rushed towards Theo and buy several cherry tomatoes. The others saw them fight over those cherry tomatoes. Theo told them to get in line. Sejin has leveled up and obtained one bonus stat. He thought that Theo must be doing well and he must have already met the hunter by now. At first glance, the magic cherry tomatoes simply look like an item to boost your magic power, but they can automatically dissolve 10 grams of fat and revitalize your body. 
Besides, there are no side effects, and it is also tasty. Sejin is confident that this will definitely sell a lot. He trusts the Earth's diet. Theo got the cherry tomatoes sold out. Several plants are on the ground. Of the 1,000 carrot seeds Sejin bought and planted from the seed store, only 700 have sprouted. And the 1,200 magic cherry tomato seeds he planted after harvesting them from the plants, only 732 have sprouted and are growing. The germination rate of the corn and sweet potato seeds Sejun bought from the seed store and personally planted is about 60 to 70 percent. The germination rates of the carrots and cherry tomatoes are also similar. Sejun thought that it'd be great if it sprouted more, but it might be because his tower farmer is low, or maybe the land isn't fertile because it's inside a cave. Since they now have Theo to earn the tower coins, Sejin says that they need to harvest as many crops as possible. Sejin notices something. Black Rabbit throws the torch. The torch got so high up the pond. Several fishes jump to the torch. The Black Rabbit jumps and strikes the fish one by one. He managed to get a lot of fish. Sejin praises him that he has gotten pretty good at hunting. Black Rabbit's body is shining, so Sejin wonders if he is leveling up. Sejin saw White Rabbits leveling up while farming several times but this was the first time he saw the black rabbit level up. Black rabbit got proud in front of the white rabbits. Sejun wants to take a break and drink some coffee. He opens the tumbler. Sejun is happy that Theo and the goblin that scammed him, Scarum didn't even open this tumbler. He said that if Theo sells this coffee, he might spend all his money just to buy it. Thanks to their ignorance, Sejun got this good stuff for free. Sejun gets honey from Honeybee. Honey Americano, a combination of coffee powder dissolved in the cool cave's water, mixed with poison bees' thick honey to create a perfect harmony of bitter and sweet taste. With just one sip, this combination can relieve fatigue and hunger. Sejin sips on his coffee happily. He asks the rabbits if they want to try. The black rabbit takes a sip. He suddenly got gloomy. Sejin laughs and thinks that the rabbit's tongue has a better sense of bitter taste than humans. Sejin saw poison honeybee. He calls her. Poison honeybee seems to be going inside her home. Sejin wonders if that's a beehive. He asks if Poison Honeybee is moving here and is happy. A new quest has been generated that orders Sejin to give 10 magic cherry tomatoes to the tower's manager. Sejin smirks because he keeps on postponing the quest. The tower manager starts to realize something after seeing his deal with Theo. Sejin offered the cherry tomatoes, and the tower manager is thanking him for his kindness. Sejin teases them that now they are even thanking him. He suddenly realizes something. He got gloomy as he wondered if he just acted like a pushover. That day in the town. Someone is having a drink. Scaram wonders why Theo hasn't returned yet. He asks if he is talking about the pushover who bought his items the last time. Scaram said that he spent all his money to buy items from him. A long time has passed, and Theo hasn't returned to the wandering merchant guild saying that he can't sell the items. Someone asks if Scaram is worried and what if he really returns. Scaram said that he's thinking of buying Theo a glass of milk, informing him about a big opportunity, and then lending him his money to accomplish it. Theo will have to work hard to repay the loan he will borrow from Scaram on usury, but he won't be able to pay his debt, let alone the ever-increasing interest. In the end, he'll become Scaram's slave until death, a lifelong slave. They said that Scaram was a genius and said that he should find him as soon as possible. Scaram said that they still have plenty of time. He wants to take a look at today's wandering merchant sales ranking. He saw that he was finally in the top 1000. The guy praises him for being in the 999th position. Scaram is happy that it's worth it to sell those things to Theo. He seemed confused when he saw something. He saw Theo at the 982 spot. They know that it's Theo. Scaram slams the table. He knows that Theo couldn't definitely sell it, so he wonders what he is doing. Theo is happy that he's back. He comes closer to Sejin. Sejin asks where he is, so Theo apologizes that next time, even if he sells out, he won't go play on the other floor and return right away. Sejin asks how many days he was playing so Theo said that it was four days. Sejin said that last time, Theo said he needed at least 10 days to make a round trip to the 30th floor, but he has time to play for four days even after selling out. Sejin thought that it'd take a few days to sell everything, but since Theo returned within 14 days, it meant he was sold out as soon as he arrived on that floor. Sejin holds Theo's shoulder. Sejin told Theo that if he didn't want to see the scary side of Partier, he should tell him the details. They sat for discussion. Theo told Sejin what happened. Sejin asks Theo if he's saying that he just talked a little, and the hunters bought it all, so Theo says yes and hands him the 50 tower coins. Sejin takes the coin pouch. Sejin praises Theo for the good work and gives him the two tower coins incentive. Sejin scolds Theo for playing and returning after four days and says that he'll reinstate him as the sales guy, 
and will also raise the incentive to 5%. Sejun asks what's up with his dialect. So Theo says that he decided to live this way as it seems humans like this side more. There's a system for a beginner wandering merchant that forcibly hides the origin of their goods. The policy is meant to prevent wealthy wandering merchants from stealing the supplies of beginner wandering merchants. And because Theo is still a beginner wandering merchant, Sejun's name as the cultivator of the crops has been forcibly covered. Theo thought that if Sejun knew this truth, he'd be very angry, let alone being an employee. He might be demoted to be an intern or might be a part-timer. Theo was startled and told them to hand him the cherry tomatoes as he'd go right away. Theo is in a hurry and says that they should just work. Theo has to hurry and remove the restriction to display the cultivator's name because the one and only way is he needs to achieve 1,000 tower coins and become a mid-level wandering merchant. Sejun wonders if Theo has started to believe him. That day at the building, they seem to be arguing about something. Dongshik's phone vibrates. His daughter texted him that the effects of the cherry tomatoes are really great, and all of her friends were jealous of it. Dongsik got teary-eyed as he got touched. Someone asks him what's wrong, so Dongsik said that his daughter, who's annoyed every day because she's struggling with her diet, said she loves her dad. Dongsik said he only brought 20 pieces the last time and left the rest for the other team member and didn't know his daughter would like it this much. The guy said that he gave the cherry tomatoes to the girl he has a fling with, and now they're dating. The boy said that he bought those and still has a few more of them, so the others asked to sell them to them. Dongsik told them that they couldn't proceed like this. He ordered them to summon the rest, and they're going to the 38th floor right now. A woman said that they were ready to go. They were shocked to see Jessica and the other team members. The girl said that they'd already prepared the tower coins to buy cherry tomatoes, but rather for the tower expedition. Dongsik told them to follow his lead. Dongsik wants to get that magical cherry tomato and become a great dad, no matter what it takes. In the middle of the forest, Theo wonders when will the amount of his sales reach 1,000 tower coins. The maximum amount of cherry tomatoes that could be stored in the bundle is 1,500. If he keeps selling like this, he will have to go back and forth more than 10 times. He saw the place where the humans gathered last time. Someone found Theo. They called the others when they saw the cat wandering merchant. The man said that they didn't know when Theo would appear again, so they had been waiting nearby for the past three days. Theo was shocked that they waited three days for the sake of buying the cherry tomatoes. The man asks if the cherry tomatoes is 0.05 tower coin per piece. Theo said that the price had already gone up. The man was shocked to know that the price had gone up. He told Dongsik that the price of the magical cherry tomato had gone up. Theo said that it was 0.07 tower coins. Theo wonders if he raises it too much. Dongsik told Theo to give him 200 pieces, which shocked him. Dongsik said that it'd be weird if such a great item cost so cheap. Theo got Seoul out again for today even though he raised the price. The 1,500 magical cherry tomatoes were still sold out. Dongsik asks Theo when he will appear again, and he says that he'll be back again in about 10 days. Dongsik said that's the perfect acceptable time to regroup after finishing a quest and said that they'll return to buy more cherry tomatoes. Dongsik told them to finish the spider quest and get off the tower. Theo smirked and thought that at this rate, he could gather 1,000 tower coins in no time. He needs to quickly become a mid-level merchant so he can uncover the name of his vendor and become a sales cat again. Several women say hello to Theo. They are saying that Theo looks like someone. The girl said that her name was Suha. Suha told Theo that he looked like a cat that she knew. Theo told them that he was the only handsome cat in the world. Suha showed him something. She asks if he wants to eat churu. Suha placed the churu into Theo's mouth. Theo tasted it so delicious. Suha showed him different flavors. Suha said she'll give it to him if he takes a photo with them. Suha told him to say peace to the camera. Theo walks away happily with Churu. She said that it was nice seeing Suha smile like that and asked if she come to see him again next time. Suha said yes, while looking at her photo with Theo. Inside the cave, the black rabbit is swimming. Sejin is in the middle of giving the black rabbit special swimming training right now. For safety reasons, Sejin has temporarily blocked the hole where the fish come from. Sejin said that this is a great development compared to the time when the black rabbit almost died after jumping into the water because he felt too happy after leveling up. Sejin saw black rabbit floating in the pond. He was petrified to see him. Just thinking about it makes Sejin's heart skip a beat. Sejin searches for the honey inside his bag. It seems he already ate all the honey he collected last time. Poison Honeybee hasn't come out since she moved a few days ago, so Sejun wonders if something happened. Sejun notices something. There are babies of the poison bee flying around the beehive. Sejun saw that the number of baby bees has increased a lot, and he didn't notice them at all. Sejun hasn't seen Honeybee for a long time, and he thinks he needs to congratulate her. 
but he can't visit her without a gift. Sejin calls for Poison Honeybee. He asks if she can come out for a moment. Sejin says that he has a gift for her housewarming. The baby bees seem to be angry at Sejin. They threatened Sejin with their stings. Sejin told them don't do these as they're not their enemies. Sejin told Black Rabbit not to fight them. But the baby bees seem to be agitated. They rushes towards Sejin but suddenly stopped. Sejin glances to the top and saw a big bee. Sejin was shocked and asks if she perhaps has that poison honeybee. She is the queen poisonous honeybee. Sejin wonders if she really is the poison bee he knows. Poison bee is an insect type carnivorous tower monster that hunts its prey using venom. That's what the black dragon knows about them. She saw that there was no explanation for a situation like this in the tower manager guidebook. Since it's not dangerous, ailing, the black dragon said that she should just keep an eye on them for the time being. Besides, even if it's not straightforward, there's a solution for it. Sejin is facing the poisonous queen honeybee. He asks if she is the little and cute poison bee. Sejin and black rabbit are shocked to see her look. She changed a lot. After the day, she ate nectar from Sejin's cave for the first time. Every time she ate nectar, her body emitted a strong scent, and her weight increased a bit. This made the queen be wary of her. However, she soon understood why the queen's attitude changed. The reason was she had become capable of laying eggs. That's when the poison bee decided to go independent. She made a beehive inside Sejin's cave, the safest place she could think of. The beehive lies at the top of the cave. She suffered pain inside her new hive. She had several transformations. Poison honeybee finally grew up. Her figure started to change, and that's how she became the queen poisonous honeybee they know. Sejin congratulates her on becoming a queen bee. He has her presence. Honeybee hugs Sejin. She is happy with Sejin. The other bees also seem to be happy, and they also hug on Sejin. The baby bees also got along with the rabbits. A few days later, inside the cave, the rabbits woke up Sejin. They seem in a rush. They took Sejin to a blue carrot. It's a carrot with the energy of the blue moon. So Sejin thinks that it's great for him if he can harvest it quickly. Sejin smirks as this is the reason they are rushing him. Sejin starts pulling out the carrot. The rabbits are happy to see the blue carrot. This is an agility carrot. Agility carrot, when consumed, it permanently increases agility stats by 0.05. Sejin's job experience points have greatly increased, and his harvest level 2 proficiency has greatly increased. Sejin obtained 70 experience points. Sejin saw that it was an E-plus rank crop. He wondered if it meant by harvesting better crops like this, he wouldn't just gain 50, but 70 experience points. Sejin thanked the rabbits. They are happy as they hold the carrot. The rabbit raises his sickle. The husband rabbit throws the carrot. He aims at the carrot and slices the carrot side by side. Sickle rabbit moves at a fast pace. Each of them has their spare. Sejin praises sickle rabbit for his good work. They eat the carrot. Sejin picks the blue cherry tomato. The blue moon has produced five cherry tomatoes. Sejin offered a blue cherry tomato to the tower manager and said that if they were thankful, they should give him another skill later. The tower manager said that they'll think about it and give it to him in a little while. Sejin asks what do they mean that they'll think if they can give it to him. Sejin suddenly heard Theo. Theo told Sejin to tell the poison bees not to attack him. Theo wasn't here when the baby poison bees were born, so he wonders if they see Theo as an enemy. Sejin told them that Theo wasn't an enemy. He's a family. Theo thanked Sejin and called him brother. Sejin pinches Theo's cheek for addressing him as a brother. Sejin calls him employee Theo and tells him to take out the money from the sales of the cherry tomatoes. Sejin calculated a total of 75 tower coins, so he praises Theo. Theo said that the humans had been waiting to buy the cherry tomatoes for quite a while, so he charged an extra 0.02 tower coin per piece. Theo said he could become the sales cat Theo. Sejin gives him his incentive while Theo asks for another title as he is still an employee. Sejin refuses and says that he's still far from it. Sejin smirks as he thinks that he already knows about it. He smirks as he recalls that the tower manager told him that they noticed Theo the cat is making more money per piece. Sejin notices something. Theo is eating something. Theo is happy to eat such a delicious treat. Sejin asks what's that, so Theo says it's churu. Theo said he got it from a human after taking a picture with her. Sejin seems shocked that a human gave those to him. There are two ways things from outside can enter the tower. The first is vanishing. This was how Sejin entered the tower. By vanishing, the newcomers bring whatever they're holding into the tower. Originally, they're summoned to the first floor, so the items they bring are used for trade that helps them climb up the tower. And the second way is an awakened hunter bringing the item into the tower. It's said that they can only bring about one kilogram of outside items. But when they leave the tower, they can take anything with them without any restrictions. 
Usually, the items that are brought by the hunters inside the tower are simple things like hunter's smartphone called a smartphone and instant food that can be eaten when they're climbing the tower. Sejun thinks that a hunter is bringing something unnecessary items like churu just to meet a cat. He realizes something. Sejun found a new business idea. Theo saw that Sejun was smirking devil and seemed to be thinking of something. He asked Sejun if he wants to eat the churu. Sejun stared at Theo. He confiscated Theo's churu. Theo told him to give it back as he got it after taking a picture with the human. Sejun got annoyed that Theo made a deal and took a picture. Sejun told him the special condition number 3 without party A's permission. Party B couldn't have additional clients and said that it was a serious breach of contract. Sejun told him not to be too disappointed, rather, they should talk about their new clients. Sejun said he'll let Theo hold the sales cat position for one hour if he does well in future trade. He can even become sales cat Theo for multiple hours. Sejun lifts Theo. Sejun addresses Theo as sales cat Theo and tends to him to comfort. Sejun said he can lay down comfortably and eat this churu. Theo wonders if being a sales cat allows these kinds of privileges. This is the best feeling in the world for Theo. Sejun asks if he enjoys the churu. And Theo says he wants to eat grilled fish, too. Sejin grilled fish for Theo. Sejin asks him how he could go to the 38th floor without fighting any monsters. Theo says it's because of his wandering merchant license. Theo explains that this badge is a sign that he's a wandering merchant, and he has to pay an expensive membership fee to the Wandering Merchants Association to maintain this license. The higher the level is, the more money you need to pay each year, but you also get more benefits, and if you have the Wandering Merchant License, you can use various association-protected facilities. Not being attacked by the monsters is one of the specialties of the Wandering Merchant. Sejin asks if Theo can bring hunters to this floor. Theo said he couldn't do that as although monsters won't attack the Wandering Merchants, they will still attack hunters. He said that without the Merchant Passageway, it's impossible to come here from the 38th floor in just 5 days. Sejin asks what floor this is, and Theo says that this is the 99th floor. Sejin was quiet for a moment. He was surprised to find it out. Theo said that they were on the 99th floor and asked Sejin if he didn't know. Sejin got dazed when he learned that he was in the 99th floor. Sejin falls to the ground. Since Theo couldn't use waypoints like the hunters, but could go on a round trip in just 10 days, Sejin thought this place was only a few floors apart from the 38th floor. Sejin told himself to snap out of it as this piece of information doesn't change anything. Theo holds Sejin's face to wake him up. Sejin seems to be still in a daze. Theo's fish got burnt. Sejin got another two pieces of fish. Sejin thought that it had been only a few weeks since the hunters started climbing the 40th floor. He wondered if he should just give up on leaving the tower. Theo commands Sejin as a sales cat to grill it properly and don't burn it like the last one. Sejin told Theo that his one hour was finished. Theo seems sad that one hour has passed already. Sejin seems to notice something about Theo's wandering merchant badge. The man seems down for the terrible turn of events is not just potion, but they don't have much food left either. Someone appears in front of them. Sejin and Theo ask them if they want to look at a few good items that they're selling for cheap. They recognized him as the legendary merchant and tower merchant Park Sejin and his mascot, Theo the Orange Cat. Sejin imagines that they are popular among helpless hunters and buy lots of their items. Sejin asks Theo if it is possible for him to become a wandering merchant. Theo said that only creatures born inside the tower can become a wandering merchant. Sejin got gloomy. Theo told Sejin that no matter how cool it may sound, he has to give up. Sejin shouts and curses in annoyance. He curses the tower angrily. The rabbits stared at him. And also the bees. The black dragon thought she heard something, too. The rabbits, bees, and Theo all stared at Sejin. Theo said Sejin scared him for a moment and asked why is he shouting like that. Sejin sighs as he realizes it's not going to be much different and he should have prepared to suffer the moment he decided to enter the tower. He thinks that it'll be his loss if he gets angry like this, so Sejin wonders what he can do if he can't get out of the tower. Sejin told himself to live every moment to the fullest. Someone showed the cherry tomatoes from the rumors. The man asks if this is the mystery item that has recently been popular among the hunters, so the woman says yes. She explains that it belongs to her brother, one of the Phoenix Guild members. He said that he happened to meet a wandering merchant and bought it. Jenny, the CEO of Easter Pharmaceutical, can't see the item's status window, but she knows that the man can. Michael McLaren, vice president of Gagel Food Company, saw that it was a magical cherry tomato. He asks what she's going to do with this crappy item. So Jenny said that as Michael McLaren, the vice president of Gagel, the one who controls 39% of the global food market, lost his business acumen. He asks if she knows what will happen if she opens her mouth carelessly. Jenny flicks her finger. She shows Michael data. Michael was surprised. 
Jenny expected and failed to extract the compound of the item they got from the tower, but the data results they got in a short period of research time are beyond Michael's imagination. Michael asks Jenny what's her reason for showing him this, as this is the business she can monopolize on her own. Jenny said that she just needed Michael's previously unsuccessful tower farming project. Michael asks how she knows about it. Jenny asks Michael if he thinks he should regain the trust of his father, the current president of Gagel. Jenny heard the board director will elect the next chairman on behalf of the current chairman, who's sick. She asks if he thinks that the cherry tomato looks really appetizing. Michael takes the cherry tomato. He eats it. He tasted it sweet and really delicious. He burst into laughter. Michael made a smirk. He said that it was delicious and asked for another one. Sejin wrote something on the ground. Sejin told them that they have to fix the inconveniences they've experienced up until now, and they also need to increase the items they need for their daily activity. Sejin also said that they have to know the nearby environment for their safety. He asks Theo if there are any monsters near the cave, and Theo says that there's no one nearby, however, there's one a bit farther away. Sejin asks what kind of monster it is, and Theo says that it's the crimson giant bear. Sejin remembers that it was the monster at that time. Theo said that it's a terrifying monster, and every time he passes by, it always glares at him. Sejin knows that there are thousands of cherry tomato flowers that will be blooming soon. And if there are a lot of flowers, the number of the poison honeybees will increase as well. In that case, Sejin can use the poison bees to patrol near the cave, ensuring that no monster can get close. Furthermore, Sejin can also ask the poison bees to tie the rope he made using the onion leaves to nearby trees, and make it out of this cave. Sejin thinks that it's a good idea. Sejin told Theo that he had a mission for him. He said that it's an extremely critical mission that only a salescat can accomplish, so he asks if salescat Theo can do it. Theo proudly agrees. A few days later, on the 38th floor, Theo watches from afar. He saw that compared to last time, there are a lot more people here, as if they're securing their place here. The more buyers, the better for Theo. They run towards Theo. The man said that he'd buy all of the cherry tomatoes. The other got angry at the man for cutting the line. Theo told them to hear his word. Theo said that starting today, he's changing his selling method. They ask what he means. Theo told them that starting today, He'll sell 500 pieces of cherry tomatoes to the person who pays the highest price. Theo starts the bidding of 500 pieces of cherry tomatoes with 35 tower coins. The popularity of the cherry tomatoes outside the tower is higher than Sejun thought. Judging from the fact that they gave Theo Churu to win his favor, Sejun bet there's some psychological competition to secure the items. Since the supply is limited, and the number of people that need it will certainly increase, the best way to make more money out of it is for Sejun to make an auction. Other than that, Sejin has also given Theo a few more important missions, and he is going to confirm Theo's trading skills using this opportunity. Sejin gets up and stretches. He has another quest that requires him to give the tower manager one glass of magical cherry tomatoes mixed with the honey he drank. Sejin said that squeezing the cherry tomatoes would take a long time, and he has to work right now. The tower manager demands that Sejin must complete the mission right now as they prepare an amazing job skill for him. Sejin asks if they can't just give it to him. The tower manager says that Sejin has to complete the quest to get the reward. Sejin told them to wait a minute. Because Sejin had a sudden craving for tomato juice, he squeezed 50 cherry tomatoes that he had harvested and put some honey into it and shared it with the rabbits. Since it tasted so delicious, the tower manager kept whining about it for a while. Sejin takes the cherry tomatoes. He squeezes all of them tightly. He told Queen Hunnaby that he needed her help. Queen Hunnaby starts spitting honey. She spits quite a lot of honey and then shoots it into the cup. The cherry tomato juice is ready. Sejin offered it to the tower manager, and the tower manager was really curious about its taste and flapping its wings. Sejin wonders about its wings and wonders what kind of animal is it. Aileen, the black dragon, sips on the cherry tomato juice. She tasted it so sweet and tangy. The tower manager praises Sejin because the juice is so delicious. Sejin opens the reward. Sejin acquired a new skill of beekeeping. Sejin was shocked to see it. Special job skill beekeeping allows the user to apply beekeeping skills on the beehive they own. Sejin seems delighted as he is worried that the poison bees will follow him when he leaves the cave. He asks if the tower manager perhaps listened to his concern. Sejin thanked the tower manager, and that made her surprised. Black Dragon seems touched by Sejin's words. She plays around the cup. He said that if Sejin is thankful, he can just give her another glass of magical cherry tomato juice with honey. Sejin said that he has something that he's curious about. He asks if the tower manager is perhaps a winged pig. Black Dragon got gloomy. She curses Sejin with mean words. Sejin asks why they are angry. On the other hand, Theo starts his auction. 
Dongsik worries about his image of a caring father if he can't buy cherry tomatoes today. Dongsik bids 41 tower coins. He said that for now, the most important thing is to secure the cherry tomatoes. The other man bids 45 tower coins. The bidding continues to go higher. Dongsik asks if she has any money, but the girl says she didn't bring much because she was only going to buy a few for a gift. A man in a suit bids 100 tower coins. He said he'd buy all the 500 pieces for 100 tower coins. Theo sold it for 100 tower coins. The hunters chatter with each other. Dongsik recognizes the person as Michael, the vice president of Gajel, the one who is called the young master of hunters. Dongsik also saw a man behind Michael. Dongsik calls him Chris and asks what he is doing here as he's off duty on this expedition quest. Chris said that his sister asked him to guide Mr. Michael to the place where the wandering merchant was. So Dongsik remembers that Chris's sister is the CEO of a pharmaceutical company. Dongsik worries that now they even have to compete against Big Pharma. Theo will start the auction for the next item. Dongsik tries to borrow money, but Michael already won the bidding. Theo just started the bidding, but Michael said he'll take all 1,500 with 300 tower coins. Dongsik slumps on the ground for losing. Michael's assistants loaded all the cherry tomatoes. Michael smirked and told them that they were going to the first floor. Suha greets Theo. Theo recognizes her as the human who gave him churu. Theo is happy to see her again. Theo guesses her name as Bua. Suha wonders if she should just say he's right. Suha asks if they can take pictures together again, and she'll give him churu. Theo refused and said that he didn't need churu. Theo told her that in return, gave him the thing called coffee that looked similar to churu. Suha showed him the coffee mix, so Theo said yes and asked if she had salt and pepper too. Suha seems to be thinking about it. Suha showed him the items. Sejin told Theo that if people ask to take pictures with him, ask for things like coffee, salt, or pepper, and depending on his performance, he'll become a sales cat for a couple of hours. Suha takes a photo with Theo. They pose at the camera. Suha and Theo thanked each other. Suha blushed when she saw Theo's cat toe beans. She feels it so soft and nibbles on them. Theo asks what she's doing, so Suha gets startled and says she can't help it because it feels so good. Suha said she'll give Theo churu. Suha thanked him for letting her touch his paws as it was quite relaxing, so Theo asked if humans feel good just by touching his feet. Suha says yes because humans don't have those soft and pretty toe beans. Theo asks if was that the case, so Suha said yes. Theo is happy that his toe beans are beans of luck. The other girl asks if she may take a picture, too, as she gave him pepper earlier. She poses with Theo at the camera. Theo suddenly moves away from her. Theo shows his toe beans and asks to touch them. He asks for rewards in return. Theo got lots of rewards from her. He was delighted that just by letting them touch his paws, he can become a sales cat for 24 hours. Theo was suddenly reminded that he had another mission, too. Suha is posing her picture with Theo. She seems happy about it. She got startled when Theo suddenly asks what she's doing. Theo asks if Suha did come from a place called the Republic of South Korea. He said that he found out because he smelled a familiar scent from her. Theo asks if she can help him. Suha seems confused. The bees fly around the farm. They also spit some honey in the bottle. Sejin's proficiency of beekeeping level 1 has increased minutely. Sejin is happy that this is going well. As the bee population steadily increased, his beekeeping skill also leveled up. Sejin saw that the option has changed from increasing minutely to a little, so he wonders what's the difference. He saw that he'll need another container to collect the honey later. Sejin harvested a carrot. He called the rabbits. He told them to eat. Yesterday, a few days after harvesting the blue moon carrot, Sejin was able to harvest normal carrots, too. The type of food that can be eaten from the cave has increased by one. Sejin sits with the rabbits. He is thinking about the agility carrot. Agility carrot, when consumed, breaks down 10 grams of body fat and increases agility by 0.1 for 10 minutes. This even breaks the fat and improves vision. So Sejin thought that once the number of harvests increases and it's possible to sell them, they'll be really famous. The rabbits harvested carrots. They placed it along with the green onions. Sejin harvested carrots, too. He asks if Black Rabbit is tired already. He told him not to be sly and try to steal and eat the carrot. Sejin saw that the storage was almost full. Sejin saw that he leveled up. He also got another quest. The tower manager says it was not their doing. It's a job quest that appears at level 10. Sejin has to pass it to get new class traits and move on to the next level. Sejin has heard about the job quest. Normal hunters receive combat-related quests such as subjugating monsters. Sejin is a farmer, so the quest type must be different. He saw that his quest is to have a 50 square meter expansion. This much is easy for Sejin. Sejin has completed the quest. 
He cheered that it was over while feeling tired along with the rabbits. Sejun can acquire XP every time he creates one square meter of rice field as a job trait. Sejun is exhausted and can't do any more than this. He told the rabbits to sleep now and finish up tomorrow. The children rabbits were stopped. Their father stopped them from entering their house. Their parents left them outside. They keep on knocking at the door. Sejun told them that they've all become adult white and black rabbits, so it's time for them to become independent. Sejun asks if they all sleep together. Sejun lies on the ground with the rabbits. He thinks that this is good sometimes. He felt that it was warm. Dongsik knows that his daughter will nag at him. Suha saw him. Suha said that Theo had something to say. Theo asks Dongsik if he is the leader of the people who came from Korea, so Dongsik says yes. Theo asks if he would like to make a contract with him. Dongsik wonders about a contract. Dongsik reads in the paper to give 50 million to the family of Park Sejun who lives in the Sosa district of Bachin. Theo told Dongsik that he had to tell them that Mr. Sejun was doing well, and they would be paying him 50 tower coins and 200 magical cherry tomatoes. Dongsik was shocked to see the cherry tomatoes. He shed tears as he can be the best dad for his daughter. Dongsik asks Theo who is Mr. Park Sejun. Since it's a message to a family, Dongsik asks if he is perhaps a hunter who can't go out of the tower right now. Sejun told Theo that it was a secret to the others that he was on the 99th floor. Theo said that Sejun saved his life on the 40th floor, so he's just doing errands for him. Dongsik asks if Theo means there is a hunter who has already made it to the 40th floor and if he is who found this magical cherry tomato, but Theo says he can't tell him that. Dongsik thought about the 40th floor that even if their guild builds a team compromising their best members, it'll still be quite difficult to get past the 39th floor, and he had never heard in the official records about a hunter who had gotten that far. Dongsik thought that if he was a solo hunter who didn't belong to any guild, he was a talented man. He thought that this was a great opportunity, with this as an excuse if Sejun kept in touch with him, they might even recruit him to their guild, and they could also monopolize the distribution of these hard-to-find cherry tomatoes. He agreed to enter a contract, so Theo told him to sign the paper. Dongsik signs the paper. The contract has been done. Dongsik told Theo that the deal was effective even outside the tower but he would see him after 10 days to update him to ensure accurate information was delivered. Kim Dongsik pleads in the name of Phoenix Guild that he will take the responsibility of delivering the news to Park Sejun's parents. The rabbits are busy building a house right now. Sejun asks if they are already done building their house. Sejun was surprised. He praised them and said that it was awesome. They made a roof made up of green onions and solid earthen walls, so the shovel rabbit and sickle rabbit must have had a hard time. Sejin saw that they also made a room to rest between the work hours, so he wished he had something like that, too. Sejin praised them and said that they did well. It's been a few days since the rabbits moved out of the couple rabbits' house. The baby rabbits have started to build their house, and the couple rabbits are still clinging to each other like before. They raise a toast for the rabbits who worked hard. Sejin thanked Black Rabbit for supplying him with great quality fish. Sejin told them that they were smart and it was a great idea to make a cup by digging a hole in the carrot. Sejin saw that the couple rabbits were sweet with each other. He seems jealous of them. He wonders why they make their children leave. Sejin told them that he thinks they're going to have younger siblings soon. A window tab suddenly appears. The seed store is now open. Sejin forgot about this. He opens the seed store. There are 100 strawberry seeds, 100 potato seeds, and 1,000 lettuce seeds. Sejin is happy to see lettuce. He really wants some sanjupsal, but there is no meat to wrap inside the lettuce so he guesses they have to pass on the lettuce. What's left are potato and strawberry. Sejin has enough money but he can only buy one of them. He picks potato seeds. Sejin purchased 100 potato seeds, and a sack appears on top of him. The sack falls on top of Sejin. Sejin shouts in the cave. Sejin managed to dodge the sack of potatoes. The husband rabbit got angry at him. Sejin picks the potato. He wants to plant this right away to harvest it. Sejin plants to steam it boil it and even make potato pancakes. Sejin told the rabbits to take a rest for today, and tomorrow, they will focus on planting the potatoes. Sejin wonders if Theo is doing well and thinks he must have completed his errands. At the central merchant's district, the citizens are walking. The others are having a good time. Theo checked the items he was packing. He saw an item that was good enough for the frying pan. All of the items have a total of 1.6 tower coins. Theo asks for a discount. The vendor said he would give those for only 1.5 tower coins. Theo asks for a discount, but he said that he can't give him any more discount. Theo said he'd buy them somewhere else. The wolf said that he couldn't just leave like that. He offers 1.3 tower coins, but Theo wants it to be 1.2 tower coins. He finally agrees at 1.2 tower coins. 
He thought that he was a newbie, but he actually met a master. He notices something. He wonders what this mark is. Theo is catching his breath. He has finally done it. He brought something without being an idiot. Sejin lectured him about how to not be a stupid buyer. First, when they suggest a price, ask them for a discount no matter what. Second, if they say no, just leave. Third, if they stop you, get a discount three times. Sejin told him to remember these three, and he won't be fooled. Theo learned that it really worked, just like Sejin said. Now, Theo is a wandering merchant who knows how to get a discount. He heard someone offering an item from outside of the tower. He saw Scaram. Scaram seems to be scamming another merchant. Theo got annoyed. Theo saw Scaram scamming another merchant. He can't forgive him for deceiving other merchants. Theo called Scaram. Theo walks towards him. Scaram asks where he has been and asks if the items that he gave him were good. Theo told him to get lost and told the other merchant not to believe Scaram because he was a fraud. Scaram asks what he is talking about as he gave him the great items at an affordable price because he pitied his situation. Theo says that Scaram must have told the merchant that the tumbler has conserving magic. Theo is agitated that all the items Scaram gave are trash. Scaram wonders where Theo hears about that information. Theo calls the guard and reports Scaram for deceiving a beginner merchant. Scaram threatened Theo that he wouldn't let him be, and he escaped them. The other merchant thanked Theo and asked for his name. Theo proudly introduces himself. The merchant thanked Theo for helping. She took a glance at Theo. She said that the mission was complete and told everyone to reveal themselves. The others jump from the roof. They appear in front of the wolf. She reminded them that she told them to get rid of all possible elements that could disrupt their mission. He apologizes and explains that their agents have been raining the surrounding 100 meters as planned, and they don't know how that wandering cat merchant jumped in. The wolf officer places the cat. This is Zarath, an agent of the Secret Inspection Bureau, Wandering Merchant Association. She told them to return to the Inspection Bureau headquarters for now. She told them about a hundred letters of apology. To reflect on their mistake today, they should bring her a hundred letters of apology. They got scared of her. Lately, they have been receiving a number of reports about a fraudulent merchant at the Wandering Merchant Association, and after a long time, they were able to track down Goblin Scaram's movements. He knows where and how to get the items that can only be found outside the tower. They have not been able to find out if he gets them through an illegal route, so it is impossible to hastily catch Scaram. However, she was somehow able to make contact with Scaram while disguising herself as a beginner wandering merchant. But in front of an on-the-spot arrest, they were interrupted. She plans to revise the plan and remembers the person as Theo. She thought that it seemed he wasn't on good terms with Scaram, so she'd have to look into him. Theo feels good. Sejin shows him the potato. He told the sickled rabbit that this is how he should cut it. The sickled rabbit cuts the potato. Sejin praised him. Sejin told them to after moistly wetting the soil, put the cut section down. Sejin boasted to the husband rabbit about his ingenious farming trick of planting 400 potato seeds with 100 potatoes. He tells him that he saw it on YouTube in the past. Sejin has acquired 10 XP for creating a 33 square meter potato field. Sejin asks them if they dig some sweet potatoes. Sejin asks them if they know what to do before that. Sejin is talking about the sweet potato sprouts. He told them that they can't just throw away the sweet potato sprouts that will make potatoes once they plant them. Black Rabbit tells them something. He told them that Sejin saw something that made him stop the rabbit from planting the sprout. They jiggle from it. Sejin knows that they are thinking that planting the sweet potato sprouts is his share of work anyway, which made them shocked. Sejin said that today. He has decided not to monopolize the joy of planting the sweet potato sprouts. The rabbits got all gloomy. They started to work. The cart rabbit gets the sprouts, while the black rabbit seems to be struggling to get them. Sejin, together with the rabbits, all work diligently. Sejin made a sigh. He has created a 500 square meter sweet potato field. Sejin saw that even without farming alone, he could get the whole XP for creating the field. The husband rabbit is happy, as well as the wife rabbit. The rabbits sing. They continue to sing with each other. They all sing and surround Sejin. The white rabbits are hoping for a full harvest of the sweet potatoes. Sejin wonders if they shall pick them up with the help of their support. The hole in the ground suddenly shines. Sejin wonders about it. It suddenly shines so brightly. Sejin seems doesn't know what's happening. A sweet potato pumpkin of the sun has appeared. And it's a mutant pumpkin sweet potato that absorbs sunlight at the tower's highest point and has the sun's energy. Sejin was shocked when he learned about it. He was shocked that he spawned a new breed. A day in the city. A car arrives. Someone comes out. It is Dongsik. He arrives at Sejin's house. Sejin and the rabbits are amazed to see the golden sweet potato. Sejin has received an achievement of spawning a new variety in the tower and was shocked to learn about it. 
The tower grants Sejun an exclusive cultivation rights of new varieties. And no one can cultivate the sweet potato pumpkin of the sun without his permission. Sejun was amazed as it's like saying that he's the only one who can have this sweet potato, and even if he harvest it and sell it to someone else, no one can grow it as he has the cultivation rights. He planted the sweet potato of the sun again. Sejun was curious about the taste, but since it's a new variety, he must make sure to grow it. He seemed spirited as he encouraged the rabbits to dig up some sweat potatoes again. Sejun harvested the sweet potatoes. They harvested several of them. All is well inside Sejun's cave. They grilled some fish and sweet potatoes. They took the sweet potatoes. Sejun touches the it with a stick. The leaves started to burn. Sejun and the rabbits blow the sweet potato to cool down. Sejun divides the sweet potato and it's still hot. Sejun and the rabbits are excited to eat the sweet potato. The rabbits start eating some of it. And the others as well. Sejun told them to eat slowly as the husband rabbit started choking. Sejun thanked the tower manager for letting the rabbits eat the sweet potatoes first. Then he offered 10 sweet potatoes to the tower manager. He glances at the remaining sweet potatoes. Sejun asks the scythe rabbit if he can give him a hand. The black dragon is peeling the sweet potato. She seems delighted while eating it. She eats the sweet potato in whole. The black dragon have eaten all of them. So she wonders if she should ask for more sweet potatoes. She saw Sejun doing something. Sejun is placing the sliced sweet potatoes on the leaves. After dyeing them like this, Sejun thought that they can turn them over once or twice more. He told Scythe Rabbit to cut one more sweet potato. Scythe Rabbit throws sweet potato in the air, then cut it into multiple pieces. The product seems to be like a fries. Sejun praises him that he cut it well evenly and said to keep doing it this way. The tower manager is angry and asks Sejun why is he throwing away the delicious sweet potatoes. Sejun explains that he's not throwing them away, but drying them as he is making something very delicious. Sejun asks the tower manager if they have ever heard of dried sweet potatoes. Someone rings the doorbell. The person at the other side of the door asks who is it. Dongsik asks if this is Park Sejun's place. The other side of the door seems getting loud. They open the door as they thought the person was Sejun. They asks who is he. They offered fruits and drink to Dongsik. She told him that they have no guests these days so she doesn't know if it'll suit his taste, but Dongsik said he's grateful. Sejun's father asks what brings him to look for Sejun and told him that Sejun is missing right now. Dongsik introduces himself as Kim Dongsik, the leader of Phoenix Guild's fifth team. Sejun's brother was shocked to heard that Dongsik is from the famous Phoenix Guild team. He's trembling as he knows that the Phoenix Guild is one of the top guilds that represents their country. And on top of that, Dongsik is marvelous top-tier hunter. Sejun's father got startled and wonders why would such an important person come to their house and offers him some high-grade melons. Sejun's parents ask Dongsik if he knows their son as he is a hunter. Dongsik took the envelope and told them that he is here to deliver this at Sejun's request. He gave the envelope to them. They were shocked to see it. Sejun's parents cry as they thought Sejun died and this is his will. Dongsik told them that it's not a will. Sejun's father opens the envelope. He was shocked to saw 50 million won. Dongsik told them that Sejun feels sorry that he urgently went into the tower and wanted to say that he's well. Sejun's father laughs in delightedness to heard about Sejun. Sejun's mother asks Dongsik if Sejun is really doing well as why didn't he come here and give this to them himself. So Dongsik told her that he can't come out because of the quest and it's something that often happens to hunters. Dongsik calls Sejun's brother, Sedol. Dongsik heard from his parents early that Sejun is missing and asks if Sedol gas no idea that Sejun entered the tower. Sedol said yes and explains that they lost contact with him all of a sudden around five months ago, and they heard no news for several months. So they asked the South Korea Awakened Association if there was anyone named Park Sejun, but they said there wasn't. Sedol asks him if do they use aliases in there, so Dongsik said that there are people who do that sometimes, but there could have been a simple error, and told him that he'll inquire about that to the association through the guild later. Dongsik learned that according to Sejun's family, he entered the tower five months ago and there wasn't a record in the association. So Dongsik wonders if Sejun did climb up the tower up to the 40th floor and with solo play. It has been 10 years since the tower appeared and there hasn't been any hunter who climbed up to the 40th floor in such a short time during that time. Dongsik wonders if is this the birth of a genius hunter unprecedented in history. Sedol asks Dongsik if does he do some kind of talent development in the guild. His father hits him and said that his brother is working hard inside the tower and let alone helping him outside the tower. Dongsik told them that becoming a hunter is an extremely dangerous job where you can lose your life, and even the association does not recommend registering more than one hunter per household, because just in case, one misfortune is enough. Dongsik is leaving, but Sejun's parents insists on serving him a meal. 
Dongsik refuses and said that he came here right after leaving the tower so he has to meet his family. Dongsik gets on his car. He made a sigh. His contract quest has been completed. He goes on as well as his mission got completed. Dongsik's daughter suddenly called. He got delighted and asks his daughter if she misses his dad. Dongsik drives while telling his daughter that he brought what she likes. On the other hand, Theo is eating while on his way to the very far 99th floor where Sejun resides. That day inside Sejun's cave, the carrots began sprouting in the water. Sejun placed it in the soil to be planted. Sejun seems delighted as with this, the planting of the carrot tops has been completed. Soak the carrot tops left over from the rabbit's daily food in water for several days. When the leaves grow to a certain extent, cover it with soil until the root part and sow it into the ground. Because the roots that have been eaten don't grow back, when flowers grow in the upper part, the seeds are collected. This is what Sejun like about farming. Working hard gives him the feeling of being rewarded with unexpected gains THDA build up over time. Sejun saw that the tower manager is asking if the dried sweet potatoes are ready. Sejun gets up and said that he was going to check on it anyway. Sejun saw something that made him happy. The sliced sweet potatoes have dried up really well. Sejun picks one of them. He wants to try it out. Sejun took a bite. He tasted a savory taste as the sufficiently dried crust perfectly holds moisture and sweetness underneath that no one can resist this soft, chewy and addicting texture. The roasted sweet potato that is dried well in the sun for 24 hours to lock in the sweetness and moisture and its chewy texture and sweet, savory taste is addicting. Sejun harvested them and said that he'll have to dry some more and eat it whenever he's bored. The tower manager asks Sejun if he has forgotten something. The tower manager told Sejun that they want to eat it quickly and they want him to quickly complete the quest and send some to them. Sejun asks the tower manager if they can wait for a moment, as it doesn't feel appropriate to send them the food in a scallion bowl every time, as Sejun has a better idea. The tower manager told Sejun that they don't need it and want him to send it quickly. Sejun showed the tower manager the wrapped dried sweet potatoes. Sejun surprised the tower manager with dried sweet potato gift package. Sejun asks if this is pretty and said that he used to do a little bit of packaging work as a side hustle. The tower manager was speechless for what Sejun did. Sejun asks if they are not going to take it, so the tower manager thanked him. Sejun felt sad as he thought that the tower manager would like it but their reaction were lukewarm. The tower manager is trembling for the cuteness of the package that Sejun sent her. The black dragon's reaction was overwhelming as she wonders how can she eat something so cute. Inside Sejun's cave, he and the rabbits are eating the dried sweet potatoes. Sejun asks the queen bee what's wrong. Queen bee gave something to Sejun. Sejun received a corn pollen bundle and his proficiency of beekeeping level 2 has minutely increased. Sejun goes to see the corn he planted. He hasn't been paying attention to them at all, but Sejun saw that they have already grown this much and even bloomed flowers. Sejun wonders if there's a honey in corn as that must be the reason the worker bees collect pollen instead of honey. Sejun wonders if he shall try out the pollen bundle since people do eat it as a health supplement. Sejun eats the pollen bundle. He was delighted as it is slightly bitter but sweet and it feels like eating candy. The other bees fly towards Sejun. Sejun thanked them as they gave him several pollen bundle. Theo came back and called Sejun. Theo saw something. The queen bee is staring at him. Theo is scared of the queen bee, so Sejun told him not to worry as they all know that he's on the same side as them. Queen bee also gave Theo a few pollen bundle. Theo sneezes as he hates pollen. Sejun asks Salescat Theo if did he do what he assigned to him. So Theo said yes and he completed all missions and even sold out. Sejun asks if did he convey the news to his family well, so Theo told him that should be the case as there's even a contract here. Sejun saw that the contract is already completed, that means his regards and 50 million won must have been sent well. Theo said that it must have gone well, as the tower contracts are ironclad. Sejun thinks of his mom, dad, and said all, as he was in a pinch when he got into the tower and it was bothering him that he didn't reach out to them. Sejun said that they wouldn't know that he went into the tower and farming with rabbits even in their dreams and he wonders what face would they make if he told them his job as a tower farmer. Sejun thought that his brother Sedol would definitely be busy making fun of him and his dad would certainly ask about the plant's nutrients and give him some tips. Sejun thought about his mom, as she always served a full table along with kimchi stew. He remembers the day when he was with his family. Sejun misses his family. The black rabbit touches Sejun. The rabbits and the bees came to comfort him. Sejun is happy that they are all his family right now. Theo told Sejun to take a look at the tower coins and items that he brought. Sejun was amazed to see that Theo gave him 208.8 tower coins. Theo also gave him the kitchenware. Sejun seems delicted as it has been long since he last saw this item. Sejun expected that it has its own item mark since it's made in the tower, 
but he wonders why is the manufacturer undisclosed. Sejin saw a dagger. He was delighted to possess a short dagger as this is his first weapon since coming to the tower. Sejin asks Theo where did he get these, so Theo said that he heard the blacksmith's lottery corner sells things at a cheap price, so he just chose what he thought was good. Sejin wonders if he should use it since he meet the usage conditions. The tower manager told Sejin that if he use an unappraised item recklessly, he may get in big trouble. The tower manager says that they will appraise it for Sejin. Sejin received a quest to send the unappraised short dagger to the tower manager. He received another quest to send the roasted sweet potatoes as a gift to the tower manager. So Sejin thought that they just want the sweet potatoes. Sejin saw that the tower manager is wiping their saliva, so he got annoyed as they already took so much earlier. Sejin told them tower manager to take the short dagger as he knows that it feels eerie to use an item with unknown information. The tower manager is using their appraisal skill. The tower manager says that, fortunately, it isn't an item that will cause harm. Sejin got the short dagger in exchange for sweet potatoes. The Kinis' training short dagger is made of black iron to give it weight, making it quite heavy for a dagger. Sejin was shocked to saw the weapon name as this makes it named equipment. Sejin thought that if he goes outside, named equipment start with the basic price of 100 million won. It's that rare and precious, so it's called named equipment. Sejin glances at Theo as he said earlier that he got this from a lottery corner. Sejin smirks as he thought that Theo was just a naive pushover. But Theo really has a talent. Theo's paws are shining. That day in the forest, a red animal is lingering inside the bushes. It smelled something. It glances behind him as it seems to notice something. Theo is happily eating the delicious churro. Sejin is practicing with the dagger. He slashes the green onion leaves and only left its lower part. The rabbits seem to be praising Sejin. Theo asks if did he like the short dagger, so Sejin said that he likes it and impressed that Theo brought this. Theo got annoyed that Sejin didn't call him Salescat Theo, so Sejin called him that and praises him. Theo touches Sejin's hand and told him to be careful. Sejin thought that Theo was just a naive pushover but he really has a golden paws. Sejin caresses Theo's paws as he thought he suddenly looks very pretty. Sejin lifts Theo and asks if he should give him one more pack of churu. Theo laughs deviously as expected of Sejin is still a human at the end of the day, and all humans bow their knees for his paws. Sejin thought that it feels a little fishy. He lifts Theo and put him down on the ground. Sejin told Salescat Theo that his one hour is over. Theo said that this is fast and told Sejin that he wants to stay as Salescat Theo for a little longer. Theo got annoyed and thought that he will have to use his special move, so he told Sejin that there's something he wants to show him. Theo brings out the things he got for Sejin. Sejin was shocked and asks if these are seasonings. Theo proudly said that he got a lot of rewards for taking pictures while Sejin takes one of them. Sejin tasted it. He was delighted as he tasted that it's salty. He smelled the pungency of the pepper and the richness of the seasonings. This is the taste of spices that he hasn't tasted in a few days. Theo asks Sejin what does he think and if he is deserving to be the sales cat for two hours. Sejin is happy and told Theo that he can let him be the sales cat for 24 hours. A smoke is coming from the Sejin's cave. Sejin grilled fish and seasoned it with salt. He put it in a stick along with green vegetable. The smoke lingers to the rabbits' houses. The rabbits came out as they smelled something delicious. Sejin told them to hurry and take a seat. Sejin have made them several food. Sejin grilled the fish with salt and pepper separately and told them to choose the ones that suit their taste. Sejin saw that most of the white rabbits must find the pepper spicy, but the black rabbit likes it. He saw that Salescat Theo is sleeping late. Sejin wakes up Salescat Theo and told him to eat breakfast. He asks Theo which one does he like between salt and pepper. Theo got alert and asks if Sejin is playing a joke on the divine fish. Sejin seems annoyed that Theo chooses the grilled fish besides the fish grilled with salt. Sejin and the rabbits work together again to grow the cherry tomatoes. Sejin harvested several of them. He saw several achievements and found out that Keynes's training short dagger option isn't only used for battles. Sejin saw that all skill proficiency that uses this short dagger increases 5% faster, so he thought he must work hard to increase proficiency. Sejin showed Theo that it's really working. Theo seems annoyed as he is the great sales guy, but why is he doing this? Sejin said that he's the chairman but he's working, so Theo got shocked to heard that Sejin is the chairman. Sejin told Salescat Theo to hurry up, so Theo asks if Chairman is a higher position than Salescat and Sejin said yes. Theo said that he learned about something good so he'll have to work harder. Theo laughs as he thought that once he become a Chairman, he'll monopolize Park Sejin's hands and knees. Theo told Sejin that he'll take his leave now. Sejin told him that when he stops by the store area, buy the things they need and to make sure to stop by the smithy and pick anything he likes from the lottery corner. Theo agrees and waves at Sejin. 
Theo goes out of the cave. Sejin plans to finish up the cherry tomatoes on this side and take a break. Sejin saw that he acquired 90 XP and thought that it's not the amount of XP that he can get by harvesting six cherry tomatoes. The magical cherry tomatoes has been ranked as D. Sejin is happy to saw it as breaking down fat, increasing mana, and even the shelf life have almost doubled and became much tastier. Sejin wonders about something. He saw that these all are D-ranked crops, so he wonders if it could be that all the plants he touched grew up as D-ranel because he's now a D-ranked tower farmer. Had Theo left a little later, Sejin could have sold D-ranked cherry tomatoes. Meanwhile, Theo is somehow feels disappointed. On the other hand, the black dragon went on a room full of golds. There's a shining statue on a pedestal. It's an ice statue of black dragon made by Kaiser Furtani, and the model is herself, Aileen Furtani. Black dragon, Aileen Furtani, breaks the ice statue. She replaced it with the sweet potato package that Sejin made for her. This warehouse is costed in a permanent preservation magic spell, as she's going to keep this instead of eating it. She plans to check out what Sejin is doing with the crystal ball. Black Dragon takes out the crystal ball. She saw that he was relaxing and taking nap, unaware of dangerous things surrounding him. She suddenly notices something. Sejin is relaxing with the rabbits. The tower manager wakes Sejin up, so Sejin asks what's wrong. The tower manager told Sejin that this is not the time to be sleeping. Sejin saw something outside the cave. He was startled as he thought it's a monster. The tower manager told the red animal to go away. But the ground suddenly collapsed. Sejin comes running below the animal. Sejin tried to catch it. And he successfully catches the red bear. Sejin wonders what this is as he thought that a dog just fell. But it's a baby crimson giant bear. It seems to be confused. He thought that it's a baby of the same monster he saw during the blue moon back then. For such as fearsome look, their babies are extremely small and cute. The tower manager asks Sejin about why he have caught the falling baby crimson giant bear. The tower manager is telling Sejin to quickly send the crimson giant bear out of the cave. They say that its mother is certainly nearby and looking for it. Sejin puts down the baby crimson giant bear. He said that it's too little and wonders if will it be okay to send it away, as it'd be a better idea to let its mother come pick it up. The tower manager said that the crimson giant bear is a gluttonous monster and she will eat all the food in the cave. The baby crimson giant bear seems to wanting to play with black rabbit. The black rabbit pats its head. It saw the bees flying. The baby bear waves at them. The baby bees suddenly got aggravated at the baby bear. The baby bear comes running at Sejin. Sejin told the bees that it's alright and it's not an enemy. Sejin told the baby bear not to cry as the bees acted like that because it suddenly approaches them. So Sejin wonders if it's because it smelled a nice scent from the lady. Sejin asks Queen Bee a favor. Queen Bee spits some honey. She gave it to the baby bear. Sejin knew it would enjoy it since it must have come here because of this smell, as bears are quite fond of honey. Sejin saw that the baby bear finished it and asks if it wants some more. The tower manager is trembling in anger. It suddenly appeared in front of Sejin. A quest has appeared and it's ordering him to send away the baby crimson giant bear out of the cave. The tower manager is angry at the baby crimson giant bear, so Sejin asks how much does it eat to make them act this way. The tower manager says that they just chasing away monster that may serve as a threat to their tower farmer, so Sejin said he wouldn't have fallen into this cave had they not surprised him. The tower manager said that it was an honest mistake, and they are ordering Sejin to listen to them right away. Sejin hugs the baby crimson giant bear. Sejin said that he was told that entering the tower was a mistake too. Queen Bee and the rabbits watch as Sejin hugs the baby bear. They seem to be surprised at something. The same with the black dragon. She seems to be annoyed. So they tell Sejin to do whatever he wants. Sejin wonders how much does the baby bear eats that the manager is acting so jealous. He told the baby bear to stand up as the scary thing is gone. The baby bear fell asleep. Sejin lies the baby monster beside him to let him sleep in the cave today. He plans to send it back tomorrow. Sejin is sleeping. He is in deep sleep. The baby bear is awake and seems to be doing something. The black rabbit is half asleep and comes out of his house. He got suddenly wide awake when he saw something. Sejin is hearing something while sleeping. He wakes up as he wonders why is it so noisy. He asks the rabbits what's the matter. Sejin was shocked to saw something. The carrots, green onions, and sweet potatoes are in mass. The green onion leaves were slanted. The baby bear is eating all of their plants. Sejin and the rabbits saw that the baby bear is eating the, the vegetables in the storehouse. Sejin saw that about a third of the sweet potatoes and carrots are gone but he didn't touch the cherry tomatoes at all. The baby bear comes running at Sejin as the rabbits are angry at him. Sejin was shocked that it grew so big as it was almost the same size as the rabbits yesterday. Sejin suddenly realizes that he's inside the tower, and it's a place where eating can cause faster growth. 
Sejin seems scared as he thought he should have listened to the tower manager. The tower manager says that the crimson giant bear cubs are the greatest gluttons who can easily eat 100 kilograms a day as long as they have food. Sejin apologizes to the tower manager and said that he thought they were just simply jealous of him feeding the bear cub. The tower manager says that what's important right now is to send away the baby crimson giant bear. Sejin is looking at the baby bear. He wonders how does he do that. Sejin ties the baby bear. He tied its body well. The rabbits are outside the tower ready to pull the baby bear. Sejin counts and told them to pull. The bees are also helping pulling the bear. The rabbits outside seem to be struggling as they pull the baby bear. Sejin saw that the baby bear is lifted and told them that they are doing well. The baby bear seems sad to be apart with Sejin. So Sejin gave it some honey. He told the baby bear that it should go to its mom now. Sejin waves at the bear as it goes up the cave. The baby bear is happy and waved back at Sejin. As the reward for completing the quest, Sejin has acquired the job skill seed gathering. Sejin praised them for doing a great job. Sejin's stomachs rumbles as he looked at the messy vegetables. He smiles at the rabbits and invited them to eat some cherry tomatoes. A few days later inside the cave, Sejin and the rabbits were shocked to see something outside the cave. The baby bear is waving at them. It's with its mother that seems to be thankful at Sejin. Sejin seems scared. He's wondering what's going on as why would the crimson giant bear mom be here. Sejin thought that it's here to eat him. He though that it will eat him because he kidnapped its child for a whole day. Sejin wonders if he's going to die now. Sejin kneels and crying while telling the crimson bear that he's not tasty because he's only eat nothing but tomatoes. The tower manager told Sejin that they're not planning to threaten him. So Sejin asks if they understand what the crimson giant bear is saying. The tower manager says yes, and said that the crimson giant bear says it would like to feed its cub honey. Sejin wonders about it. The crimson giant bear growls at Sejin. The crimson giant bear says it will protect the surrounding or in return for the honey. It stretches its hand towards Sejin. Sejin and the rabbits seem happy. Sejin said he will give them honey. The tower manager is telling Sejin to get on the crimson giant bear's paw. So Sejin got on its paw. The crimson giant bear lifts Sejin from the cave. Sejin thanked his crops as they've been growing well inside the cave all this time. He was delighted as he's finally getting out of this place, to the true world of this tower, outside this cave. Sejin got dazzled by the light outside of the cave. He was amazed to witness the outside. Sejin looked at the view outside of the cave. He saw that it's so vast and wonders if they really inside the tower. He wonders about the beam from afar. The tower manager told him that that place is a waypoint. A waypoint is the only device that allows hunters from outside the tower to move between floors. Sejin thought if he can just use the waypoint, he'll be able to leave the first floor and get out of the tower. Sejin wonders how do he get there. He wonders if does he has to pass the wilderness as it's impossible with his walking distance. Sejin asks the crimson giant bear if it could take him to that beam. The tower manager says that the crimson giant bear refuses. It says that that place isn't its territory. So Sejin will have to defeat about 3,000 monsters to get to the waypoint. Sejin learned that there are monsters on the way there. The crimson giant bear says that its territory is from the inside of the forest to the surrounding or of this place and most monsters don't come to this place that leads to the wilderness. It says that it might be hard to protect Sejin if he get out of this territory. Sejin seems to understand. He thanked Black Rabbit for bringing him his bag. Baby Bear hugs Black Rabbit. Black Rabbit is happy to be with Baby Bear again. The Crimson Giant Bear breathes at Sejin, so he got reminded of the honey. Sejin told the Baby Bear to have some honey. He gave it a plenty of honey. Sejin asks the Crimson Giant Bear if it wants some too. It says it's good and wants Sejin to give it to its cub, as there's nothing to eat in this place. That's why the cub hasn't been growing well. But its cub grew so much in one day that it was with Sejin. Sejin knew that it did eat a lot to the point that they ran out of storage. Sejin told Queen Bee that the crimson giant bear says her honey is helping. Sejin asks if did it starve itself today since there's nothing to eat in this place. It says it has been starving for three days looking for this cave, so Sejin got worried. He suddenly called the black hunter rabbit. Sejin brings out the pan and fagger to show his skills as Chef Sejin. Black Rabbit got several of fish. Scythe Rabbit slices some carrots. Sejin tossed them in the pan. He stirred it well and tasted his cooking. Sejin's food is ready. He cooked fish tomato carrot stew. The Crimson Giant Bear and its cub is growling while looking at the food. Sejin says that the mom should eat well so that her baby grows well. The Crimson Giant Bear reached Sejin and the rabbits as well. It hugs them for what they did for her. The Black Dragon watches as Crimson Giant Bear thanked Park Sejin. Black Dragon doesn't know why, but it seemed to want to establish friendly relations with Sejin. So he stepped and told it she would pass on its message to Sejin. But she didn't expect the picture would turn out this way. 
Black Dragon says she'll have more to eat if Sejin comes out of the tower, and his field increases, and if the Crimson Giant Bear becomes their bodyguard, she'll have less work to think about. She praises herself as the genius, Black Dragon, Aileen Fratani. Meanwhile, at the Wandering Merchant Inspection Bureau headquarters, they are looking at Theo's background. The fox says that the information is lacking. The same goes with the situation with Scaram. And judging by Theo's personality, it doesn't look like he's that skilled as a merchant. The fox wonders how did Theo secure this number of sales. Someone called Sir Zareth. She told Sir Zareth that there have been reports of stolen goods entering the black market in small quantities and the report about the list of stolen items the director asked for. Zareth said that Landlord Grid is a vicious landlord who eats off the backs of the peasants. He wonders why does their inspection bureau headquarters have to step in to search for shoplifters like this. Someone suddenly came to report something. He said that they received a report from he inspection bureau agent managing the passageway that a wandering car merchant presumed to be Theo had just arrived on the 75th floor through the passageway of wandering merchants. Zareth told him they should go and he'll go over the list when he get back. He thought about wandering merchant Theo and plans to find about him for sure while putting his honor as Zareth from the wandering merchant inspection bureau. Meanwhile, Theo is buying something to eat. The crimson giant bear peeks at Sejin's cave. It has been three days since Sejin made a deal with the Crimson Giant Bear Mom. Sejin brought her something to eat. He told it to eat this while it's out on patrol. Crimson Giant Bear Mom leaves her cub in the morning and immediately goes on patrol. After coming out of the cave, the rabbits and Sejin started moving their things little by little and started clearing the area around the cave. But the situation is completely different from the fertile underground soil. Sejin saw that there are too many small stones and the ground is too dry, so it looks like it'll be difficult for crops to grow. Sejin notices something. The baby bear seems to be clearing the ground. He praises the baby bear since it'll be easier to pick out the stones now. He gave it sweet potatoes for doing a good job. In just a few days, its height grew almost as close to Sejin. Had it stayed in the cave, it creeps Sejin out just thinking about it. Sejin plants the sweet potato. The land looks so barren, so Sejin will plant root crops for now and they'll have to push for cherry tomatoes for later. He saw that the baby bear is digging on the ground. It gets the sweet potato Sejin has planted. Sejin told it that they are not looking for treasure. Sejin scolded the baby bear as it ate up everything he worked so hard to plant, and he'll have to reorganize the whole field now. Sejin thought that if he's going to keep staying, he'll have to teach him the concept of planting. Meanwhile at the 38th floor, Theo told the humans that today, he will be auctioning batches of 300 magical cherry tomatoes with a total of 1,800 tomatoes. The humans started to bid. Someone won the bid for the cherry tomatoes. Theo seemed sad that it lesser than last time's goal and thought that it would be nice if an extreme pushover came like last time. Theo saw that Dongsik arrives. Dongsik told Theo to tell Sejin that he has talked with his family, while Theo asked why did he not participate in the cherry tomato auction this time. Dongsik say he needed something else other than cherry tomatoes this time. He asks Theo if they can take a picture together as his daughter likes cat. Dongsik gave him red pepper powder, South Koreans just can't eat without this. Theo tasted it that made Dongsik startled. Theo jumps in shocked. His tongue hurts. The store stuff told him that his bundle upgrade has been completed. Theo's tongue is still tingling from earlier. Theo seems happy as the capacity has been increased so he can now fit hundreds of more cherry tomatoes. At this rate, Theo will gather 1000 tower coins and also become a mid-class merchant. And not just that, he'll be able to become the chairman and make Sejin kneel before him. He plans to stop by the store alley and finish Sejin's errands. Theo suddenly smells something from the food stall. He wants to soothe his hurting towns with that. Theo says to give him one of that, so the owner charge him with one tower coin. Theo asks for a discount. He was delighted to have succeeded in getting a discount today too. Someone called Theo. Theo recognized him as the pushover that almost got tricked by Scaran. Zareth got annoyed as Theo said he's a pushover, as Theo was the one who ruined the operation. Theo asks what's the matter, so Zareth said he hasn't repaid Theo for saving him last time, so he'd like to treat him. Theo refuses him and said he's busy. Zareth coaxes him to have some simple tea, but Theo said he doesn't want to as he can't drink hot things. Zareth told to have a top quality dessert called special pudding, but Theo said he hates sweets too. Zareth got angry as he wonders why Theo is so firm. Zareth nags as he pleases Theo to listen to him. Theo asks why is he suddenly throwing a tantrum, so Zareth said that it hasn't been long since he became a wandering merchant to earn living, but he's really lacking in the skills of a merchant. Zareth told Theo that he was very impressed that he saw through the cruel Scaram's evil ploy at once and saved this complete stranger out of Theo's warm consideration. Zareth said that he respects Theo, 
and would like to learn his merchant skill. Theo got delighted when he heard Zareth called him Great Wandering Merchant. Theo told Zareth that he can teach him a little. Zareth smirks as it unheeding Began worked as this technique has never failed to work on someone. Theo told him to stand up now. Zareth asks where is he going, so Theo said that there's something he'd like to buy, so he was on his way to the smithy alley. Zareth wonders about the smithy alley. He wonders how excellent is the item that Theo's trying to buy. Theo asks if the owner is here. They went inside. Zareth found out that this place is a place with unappraisable or indivisible items. In short, a store to pick items treated as junk. Zareth wonders what kind of merchant skill is Theo going to teach him here. Zareth asks if he's trying to buy things that can be sold. So Theo said he'll find out when he see. The citizens are shopping outside. Some are looking for items. Zareth saw a pretty dagger. Zareth told Theo that he heard there are so many high-class items in this smithy. So Theo told him not to buy those trifling items. The guy said that it's right since most of the items here are unappraised, so they can't know their price, and if they pay for items that have been rotten because of their old age, they'll forge it for them. Theo got startled and called him master. Theo asks to give him a discount. Zareth was petrified. He was confused and wonders if this is Theo's merchant's skill. Theo is asking for a discount. Zareth was shocked as they are in a place that sells items at a discount, and Theo wants another discount on top of it and he's that confident. The owner said he can take it at 18 tower coins, so Zareth was shocked he gave the discount. Theo asks for more discount. The owner says for 15 tower coins, but Theo insists to sell it at 13 tower coins as he promises he'll come here often. Theo was happy when the owner gave him 13 tower coins discount. Zareth told Theo that he's very cool. Zareth is thinking that it's just Theo acting stubborn. He asks what Theo is actually thinking about buying here. Theo found something. He said that he's going to put this hat. Zareth asks if he's serious. He said that it's not even a weapon but a straw hat, and it's 100% zonk item. The owner asks him if he has any dissatisfaction with this shop, so Zareth said no. Theo told him that he's a nuisance, so Zareth apologizes. Zareth is wondering why does he has to apologize. Theo liked the straw hat since Sejun told him to buy anything he likes. They came out of the shop. Theo said he has shown him everything so he's going back now. Theo hopes that Zareth to become a good merchant. Theo goes on his way. Zareth said it's unnatural to follow Theo more than this so he'll have to retreat now. He suddenly realizes something. He looked behind and saw Theo holding the hand. He looked at the hat and recalls that it's on the list. Zareth thought that there's no way. Meanwhile, Sejin is collecting the seeds from the flower. The seedlings have grown from the carrot flowers earlier than expected. Sejin saw the rabbits with fish. Sejin asks them to clean the fish together with sickle rabbit as it seems like the mother rabbit has no appetite these days. So Sejin plans to bring her some fresh cherry tomatoes. Sejin harvested ripe cherry tomatoes. He saw that the level of harvest skills, new effects have been added. Harvest level 4 makes slightly unripe or overripe fruits optimal for harvesting. Sejin feels happy just by thinking of being able to eat tastier cherry tomatoes. He has learned that there are additional added skill effects if the job skill levels up to level 4, so he wonders if he can only find out by leveling up the other skills. The rabbit seems to be calling Sejun. Sejun slices some leaves. He's done gathering some ingredients. Sejun said that the clear fish soup for the pregnant is done. Clear fish soup is filled with Sejun's love for the mother rabbit. Fish, carrots, and green onions were added for its refreshing taste. Sejun told the wife rabbit that even if she has no appetite, she must eat well as health is very important for the pregnant. He told the black rabbit that he'll see his little siblings soon. Baby bear calls Sejun. So he told the rabbits that they should head up and eat and leave the crops inside the cave to cart in sickle rabbit's care. Sejun tied the luggage with the rope and also ties himself to be carried upward. Sejun told the baby bear to pull up. So the baby bear do so as he told. The baby bear is pulling up Sejun along with the luggage all by himself. Sejin waves goodbye at the rabbits. A few days ago, with the giant bear mom's help, using a rock as a pulley, they were able to build a manual elevator. They've been starting their day with the giant baby bear coming to work in the morning, bringing him to the ground for his breakfast. Sejin just asked for a stone to tie a rope, but the giant bear mom gave him a boulder. Sejin praises the baby bear for his great job, and it may be because of his big bill, he became stronger too. Sejin wonders if it is because baby bear wanted to eat quickly, not because he wanted to see him. Sejin brought him roasted sweet potatoes, as he has always eaten them raw, so he must have never tried the roasted ones. The baby bear seems to be delighted for the roasted potatoes' taste. Sejin told him to eat slowly as he eats so fast. Baby bear saw that there's only one roasted sweet potato left. He seems to have an idea. He suddenly jumps while bringing the sweet potato. 
Sejun asks what is he doing when he saw him digging something on the ground. Baby Bear shows Sejun that he's planting the sweet potato. Sejun asks if he's planting the roasted sweet potato into the ground and if he wants to eat it after it grows. Sejun and the rabbits burst in laughter at the baby bear. He told him that it won't grow just because he planted it in the ground, as it doesn't work with food cooked with fire. Sejun wipes his tears of joy as he had a good laugh in a long time. He suddenly saw a buried fish on the ground. Sejun and the rabbits saw several of them planted. He said that they'll need supplementary classes. The baby bear seems sad. On the other hand, the bee seems to be waiting for something outside their hive. The queen bee is sitting inside. She is holding something. Baby bear and black rabbit seems to be on a fight. The black rabbit seems to be teaching him a lesson. The baby bear seems happy with him. Black rabbit jumps as baby bear tried to catch him. Black rabbit strikes him several times. He saw baby bear's claws approaching him. Baby bear catches him and hugs him. Sejin saw them playing. He wonders if they are training or playing around. Sejun thanked Cart Rabbit for bringing him something to drink. He notices the bees coming out of the cave. So he thought that it looks like the poison bee is out on patrol. The queen bee suddenly went outside. Sejun asked her why did she come outside as she was just spawning. Queen bee gave something to Sejun. Queen bee and the bees bows at him. And the bees fly upwards. Sejun wonders what did she give him before leaving. Queen bee gave Sejun a cocoon of the poison queen bee. The poison bee caterpillar is getting ready to hatch into a queen poison bee after accidentally ingesting royal jelly. In 10 days until hatching, it will consider the first target it sees as its owner. Sejun was shocked to learn that it's a cocoon of the poison bee queen. Sejun seems to understood that it hasn't been long since the queen bee became the queen, so their power as a beehive isn't that strong. Having a new queen being born in a beehive that isn't ready to split means that the already small power will be weakened even further. Sejun thought it must be precious child to Queen Bee. Sejun seems delighted. He wants to work hard so that they can hatch into a wonderful Queen Bee Poison Bee. Sejun is looking forward to the day they meet. In the middle of the forest, Theo is happily walking. He's finally almost at the cave. He thought that Sejun will kneel down and he will enjoy the authority of the CEO. Theo suddenly saw a crimson bear. He asks what it is doing in front of the cave. Theo saw that the bear has Sejun's bag. He wonders why Sejun's bag is outside the cave. He was wonderstruck as he thought the bear killed Sejun. Theo slumps on the ground as his ominous thoughts are never wrong. Theo thought that no wonder he felt something ominous ever since going into the 38th floor. Theo showed his claws ready to attack the bear. He charges at the baby bear. Sejun suddenly called Theo. Theo got down. He suddenly comes towards Sejun. Theo asks Sejun if he is alright or did it want him anywhere. Theo asks about Sejun's knees and wonders how did he get out of the cave. He asks Sejun what is the deal with the Crimson Giant Bear. They are surrounded by trees. Sejun introduces Theo the Crimson Giant Bear Cup and told him it happened to fall into the cave and they got close. In return for its mom protecting the surroundings, Sejun agreed to give it honey and food. Theo thought Sejun was eaten by that Crimson Giant Bear. Sejun thought it's ambiguous to keep calling it Crimson Giant Bear, so he's thinking of a name. He asks Theo if he could ask the Bear Cub its name. Theo says that Bear Cub is just Bear Cub and it doesn't know its name. There's something that comes to Sejun's mind to give it a temporary name. He thought of a really amazing name. Sejun said it's queuing. Because he keep crying queuing queuing all the time, so it's the perfect name for him. Theo and the rabbit were speechless. Theo said that Sejun has no sense in naming people. He said that it's a suitable name and asks Baby Bear what does he think while caressing him. The Baby Bear seems to like his name queuing. Theo told Sejun to stop and take a look at something. He said that he completed all mission this time too and sold everything. So Theo asks how much time will it give for being a sales guy. Sejun told him about 38 hours, so Theo is happy and asks for the churu. Sejun gave Theo a churu. Theo was about to eat the churu, but Kewing took it instead. Theo asks what is he doing. He got annoyed for taking his churu, and fortunately, Sejun restrained him from attacking Kewing. Kewing cries loudly as Theo scratches his cheeks. Sejun saw the forest moves. A crimson bear suddenly jumps. Sejun and Theo were shocked to saw it. A crimson bear appeared in front of Sejun. It came out tend the baby bear cub as it heard him crying. The crimson giant bear seems agitated, while Kewing is crying as he points at Theo. Theo is trembling in fear. The crimson giant bear mom is agitated while looking at Theo with menacing look. Theo is trembling as he introduces himself as a wandering merchant cat. He tries to show the bear mom his wandering merchant badge and told her that he had a little misunderstanding with her baby. The bear mom growls loudly at Theo. She is aggravated at him. Sejun is covering his ear for the loud noise. Theo apologizes to the bear mom and said that they won't fight anymore. Sejun explained to hear that it was just a little argument and nothing really happened. 
The bear mom seems to have understood but still angry. She finally walks away from them. Sejun touches his chest as he thought they were in big trouble. He asks Theo if he's alright and tries to calm him down. Theo cries, while Sejun apologizes to him and said he should have told him sooner. Black Rabbit licks Theo to comfort him. The other rabbits also come. Hewing saw that they are having fun without him, so he felt sad. Hewing comes to Sejun while feeling sad. He licks Theo, so Theo apologizes to him and told him to be friends from now on. Theo beg him not to eat his treats. They seem to be sleepy. Hewing also yawns with them. The rabbit couple saw them, and the rabbit husband saw the straw hat inside Theo's bundle. He took it and seems have taken a liking. The rabbit wife called him. They saw Sejin along with the others are sleeping. They seems to be sleeping well. The rabbit couple are happy. They place the hat on Sejin's head, and the rabbit couple sleeps with them together. Sejin smiles while sleeping. On the other hand, at the other planet, several black dragons are lightning something. Someone is trying to get a hold of something. Something suddenly sparks. He got agitated and wonders why the tower is not opening. Anton Fratani told him to calm down. Kaiser Fratani asks if Anton think he can calm down in this situation as he can't see Aileen anymore. Kaiser said that it's been 10 years and several days since the last seizure and he was finally able to get the medicine and now the portal doesn't work for some reason. Kaiser explained that the emergency system of the tower doesn't react even so there isn't any other way for them to cross over, so they are stuck here without knowing what's happening in there. Anton told Kaiser that the fact that the emergency system of the Black Tower didn't work proves that Aileen hasn't got a seizure, so they still have time. Anton said they understand how Kaiser feel as they are all for Tani after all, and all of them gathered here for Aileen, so they are anxious too. The tower manager's cabin is at the center of all mana that supports the tower. Dragons take turns to manage the tower and use this place to get stronger. Anton said that all the dragons gave up on such a place for Aileen who is ill. And in order to look for the medicine for Aileen, they had to risk a lot of danger and losses. And these dragons gathered to help the unstable body of Aileen that was broken by her dragon heart. Anton told Kaiser that all the dragons here feel the same for Aileen. Kaiser told Anton that they can't do anything if he say such a thing. Anton said that he understand what his father mean. That is why he is calm. Because Aileen is his daughter. Anton explained that he believes in that child more than anyone else, and he's sure that child is fighting the seizure well. Kaiser agrees to Anton. He orders the dragons of Fratani to stand by until the tower opens. The dragons fly to do the order of Kaiser. Anton said that it's already past the seizure date they were expecting, so he asks Kaiser if he thinks there was a good change with Aileen's dragon heart. Kaiser looked at the crystal and is hoping for something. He is thinking of his granddaughter, Aileen, and hoping she is eating well. Meanwhile, Aileen is really eating well. She is reading a book while eating cherry tomatoes. She wonders if it is because the cherry tomatoes rank raised to D-class as the taste has gotten stronger. Previously, Aileen was only able to taste them when she filled his whole mouth, but now, only a few are enough. Aileen got startled when her dragon heart suddenly beats. She suddenly got up in surprise. Her dragon heart has never beat even once in the last 200 years. Aileen was surprised as it moves on its own and absorbed mana for a while. She suddenly reminded that she is supposed to have had a seizure by now. She wonders if it is perhaps because of the cherry tomatoes. Sejin's crops that increase mana slightly, Aileen forgot about that trait. She thought it only tasted good, but it even has the ability to heal a dragon heart. Aileen happily eats the cherry tomatoes. She seems delighted, as the great black dragon, Aileen Furtani, age 200, have finally found someone she wants to protect. Since she got an opportunity to have her dragon heart beat again, even if it was only for a moment, she will protect Tower Farmer Park Sejin. Aileen thought that Sejin should be honored, as it's a really huge blessing for her like someone. Aileen laughs as she saw Sejin got an unrated item while she wasn't watching and thought that he is unstoppable. Sejin scratches his nose while sleeping. The tower manager is asking for something. Sejin wakes up. He was startled as the status window is so close that he can't see it. The tower manager asks Sejin if they ever said that using unappraised items recklessly can put him in big trouble. Sejin told the tower manager that they surprised him while he was asleep and asks what does they mean by unappraised items. Sejin wonders why a straw hat in on his head. Sejin learned from the rabbit husband that it's from Theo's bag, so he wonders if Theo brings it this time. Sejin tries to wake up Theo, but Theo still sleeps. Sejin brings out the status window. The farmer's straw hat has protection of Mother Earth skill that grants a weak protection of Mother Earth to all owned farmland, and the intelligence recovery is slightly faster. The tower manager tells Sejin to appraise the straw hat first. A new quest orders Sejin to send the unappraised star hat to the tower manager, so he completed the quest right away. Aileen took the straw hat. 
She wonders if she shall show off her skills. Aileen uses her appraisal skill. She appraised the straw hat. She notices something about this item. The tower manager looks at the appraised item and is happy, and she congratulates Sejun on how excellent the item turned out to be. The tower manager wants Sejun to promise that he will present his crops full of Blue Moon's energy during the next Blue Moon. Sejun realizes that it's time for the Blue Moon soon, and his field has grown bigger so he can give that much. Aileen Furtani wants Sejun to hold his pinky finger and make promise. The tower manager told Sejun her name and wants him to know how Sejun should feel. Sejun heard her name as Aileen Furtani and said she didn't have to say her name. The tower manager is angry and asking if Sejun wants his straw hat back or not. She is excited while banging her feet on the floor, saying that it is a great honor. Sejun said yes and told Aileen Furtani that it's an honor to know her name. Park Sejun promises to give his crops to Aileen Furtani once he harvests his crops full of energy of the blue moon during the next blue moon. The tower manager says that this is Sejun's first promise to her. Sejun wonders about it while sticking out his pinky finger. Sejun is sticking his pinky finger, while Aileen on the other side does too. She said that this is their first promise. Sejun has completed the quest. He acquired an artifact straw hat of St. Patrick of Earth for completing the quest. Sejun wonders about it being an artifact. The straw hat of St. Patrick of Earth is an artifact, which has always been worn by farmer Patrick who was called the Saint of the Earth because he saved many starving people through farming. Sejun was shocked to learn that it's one of the ten artifacts in the tower, and this is his first time hearing about a named equipment being classified as an artifact. He saw that the level and stat restrictions that were originally written has as usage restrictions disappeared. And in return, there's a restriction of those with job related to farming. Sejun is delighted as considering that the abilities will grow depending on the user's job level. It seems like they will be determined when worn. The grade of artifact straw hat of St. Patrick of Earth had increased to D when Sejun worn it. E-class restrictions are lifted. The restrictions of the skill protection of Mother Earth level 2 has been lifted and reveals the skill farmer's body. D-class restrictions have also been lifted. The restrictions of the skill protection of Mother Earth Level 3 has been lifted and revealed the skill farmer's body level 2. The system reveals the skill wishing for a good harvest at level 1. The straw hat of St. Patrick of Earth is ranked as D. Sejin saw that the item options are so wonderful and surprised that this is what an item of the 10 artifacts in the tower is like. He was delighted for this wonderful item as these are essential skills to cultivate this barren wasteland outside the cave. Sejin smiles as his hunch was correct that Theo has gold hands. He hugs Theo for being a lovely and proud salescat. Sejin kisses Theo's paws. Theo suddenly awakes and asks what Sejin is doing. Sejin told Theo that he will be the salescat Theo for the next one week, so Theo immediately got up to hurt it. Sejin lifted Theo in the air while praising him. Theo is proud and happy for being a salescat. Inside the cave, the rabbits are eating and seem to be waiting for something. Black Rabbit seems to be concerned at something. While Sejin is trembling, Theo is being shaken while on Sejin's lap. So he told Sejin to stop shaking his feet as he's going crazy, so Sejin said he couldn't help because he was too anxious. Sejin said that it seems like it's been a long time, but there hasn't been any news. Theo said it's been difficult waiting for so long and asked Sejin to give him one churu. Sejin saw a rabbit come out of the house. Sejin asks how many are there and if they are all healthy. Sickle Rabbit brings out three baby rabbits. Sejin saw Rabbit Husband comes out of the house and he was holding three more baby rabbits. There are six baby rabbits in total. Sejin said he needs to make some soup to help the rabbit mom recover her body after her hard work this morning. Sejin told Theo to come closer. They are all looking at the cute baby rabbits. Theo saw that they are so small. Sejin said that Theo has become an uncle, so he calls him Uncle Theo. Sejin told Uncle Theo to take good care of the baby rabbits. Sejin saw Theo take something from his cape. As a cool uncle, Theo wants to give Churu which he loves the most to the baby rabbits. Sejin told Theo that the babies are too young, so they can't eat Churu. Sejin asks if Theo is secretly hiding Churu. Day 179 of being stranded in the tower, Sejin's new family members were born. Outside the tower, the beam can be seen. The stone in the center is glowing. It's glowing like a crystal. A group of horned beings are in front of the beam. Their leader told them that the blue moon is coming soon, and do not give in to hunger. They were told to find them in that barren wasteland. He told them to find everything that they can eat. He is the 99th floor boss monster, king of the horses and cows. Meanwhile, Sejin together with his family is happy inside the cave. Wishing for a good harvest skill has been activated. 30 pyong of the magical cherry tomato field will yield a good harvest and the harvest amount will increase by 50% for the next week. Sejin saw that there are many more flowers than usual and learned that this is how the harvest increases by 50%. 
Sejin wonders if Kyui and his mom are preparing for the blue moon as they didn't come today. Sejin notices something. He saw that Theo is telling the baby rabbits not to run. Theo takes the fishbone and tells the baby rabbits that it's dirty. He also tells them that the fire is very dangerous. Theo said that, that everything is dangerous and told them to stick with him as their uncle. Sejin had no idea that Theo had the knack for being a guardian parent. Sejin asks how is his role as cool uncle Theo going on, so Theo said that it's exhausting. But Theo said it's enjoyable because he's the uncle. The rabbit couples seem to be thankful at Sejin, so Sejin also thumbs up to them. Sejin told them to come back before dinner, while Theo takes the babies on an adventure. They are inside the cave, and the bees are blocking the windows and doors of their hive with honey. The rabbits close their door. The same with the rabbit couples. Sejin is all prepared too. He asks Salescat Theo what is he doing. Theo said he's going inside this to avoid the blue moon, as the bundle has a feature that can block the energy of the blue moon. Theo explained that this one is only as biffk as a simple tent, but other wandering merchants use bundles that are as huge as house. So Sejin said that bundle has more features than he thought. Sejin asks Salescat Theo if he would take this with him too. Sejin handed him the cocoon, so Theo asks what is this. Sejin said that it's a queen bee's cocoon, so Theo got shocked. Theo understood and said he's going to keep it safe in his fluffy fur. Sejin saw outside that the blue moon has begun. The blue moon starts. Sejin wonders if Kyui and his mom is doing fine. A loud noise suddenly heard by Sejin. He wonders what it is as it's his first time hearing this loud noise. So he wonders if another monster is entering Kyui and its mom's territory. Sejin got startled at the very loud sound. It's suddenly gone, and Sejin wonders what was that sound as it sounded like a cow's cry and thinks if there are any cows on the 99th floor. The cherry tomatoes turn blue. Sejin wonders if the energy of the blue moon more intense today. The blue moon also illuminates another plant. Sejin saw that side the cornfield, and wonders if the corn is absorbing the blue moon energy too. Sejin is delighted and wonders if it is because the field is getting the effect of the good harvest skill as blue moon's crops are also having a good harvest. The blue moon has finally gone. Theo glances around. He told Sejin that no one is here. Theo asks if won't it be a good idea to come out after Kyuan and his mom come as the outside may still be dangerous. Sejin explained that when the blue moon appeared early, there was a monster wandering around the cave, so he must check if the field is safe. Theo said he'll go with Sejin too although he's tired, so Sejin thanked him. As expected by Sejin, they tore apart the field planted with sweet potatoes. Sejin wonders what kind of footprints are these, as he saw hooves that extremely big. He thought that they must be really strong. Judging by how deep and high the dirt pile is, Sejin realizes something. He climbs the soil. Theo asks how long are they going to be here, so Sejin told him to wait as there's something he must check out. Sejin was delighted as he expected that the texture is different from the usual barren soil, and it's not crumbly, retains moisture, and has the right viscosity like a soil full of nutrients. To think this kind of soil was underneath the barren land, the possibility of rebuilding this wasteland has opened up and Sejin visualizes that they can create a bountiful field. Sejin said that if they can just turn the entire land upside down and mix everything up, but he doesn't have any farming equipment like forklifts or tractors, as digging the land this deep is too much for Shovel Rabbit. The tower manager is flustered and asks Sejin what is he doing here. She told Sejin that the blue moon may have disappeared, but the monster's territories are scattered. So she warns Sejin that it's still dangerous and wants him to quickly go back into the cave, so Sejin agrees. Sejin asks Aileen, the tower manager, if was she doing well last night. The tower manager says that she is doing fine and does not want Sejin to worry. She orders him to think about his safety more as a tower farmer. Sejin says that she's worrying about him more today out of all days. He was reminded about the blue moon crops and told Aileen to look forward as a lot of things have opened up today. Sejin and Theo goes back inside the cave. The corn is shining. Sejin harvested it. He harvested a corn of stamina containing the energy of the blue moon and has acquired several achievements. Sejin was amazed to see a blue corn of stamina. The corn of stamina containing the energy of the blue moon increases stamina permanently by 0.1 when consumed. Sejin thought that it may be because it's a D-grade crop, as the stat increases twice as much as an E-grade crop. Sejin said that it is more important right now for him to feel the crunchy texture and taste of corn. The tower manager asks if Sejin has forgotten about his promise, so Sejin said he couldn't help it. Sejin picks the blue cherry tomatoes. He offered them to the tower manager. The tower manager thanks Sejin and says that she will make sure to repay him later. Sejin said he'll be looking forward to it. Aileen seems happy that she got five cherry tomatoes containing the energy of the blue moon. 
She thought that if normal cherry tomatoes could make her dragon here beat, the blue moon's cherry tomatoes will certainly. She consumes all of them. She got happy that they are so tasty. She suddenly realizes that the taste isn't important right now and plans to focus on the flow of the mana. Aileen feels a bit deeper inside her. She feels her dragon heart. She finally felt it beats. Aileen suddenly collapse on the ground. She seems to be struggling from the pain. That's all for today. If you want the next part of this manhwa, please like this video and comment next part for more content like this. Goodbye.